Hi and welcome to Everything Explained. This is a very, very long form content video and this is specifically for people that are new players or haven't played Path of Exile before. I'm going to make a new character, go through the campaign and explain pretty much everything that happens and everything we find throughout. So it's very, very good for people that are completely new to the game. This is obviously an insanely long video, so you don't have to watch it in one session. Have this playing as you are playing along as well is generally what it's intended for. So uh, yeah, other than that, it is also going to be a raw upload because of the length. It can be up to eight hours. Um, we won't edit out breaks and stuff on YouTube. Just skip them and uh, you're screwed if you're watching on Twitch. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. We are today and, and alerts are off as well to make it a better experience. And I'm probably not going to listen to music, maybe just in-game music. So very, very long form content. We are going to be playing Trickster Cold Dot. So that is a shadow and uh, it's basically going to be a cold spell user. I was initially going to do another ascendancy called Occultist and I would strongly recommend looking at both Occultist and Elementalist, especially for softcore players. They can be incredibly strong and fun. The reason I'm going to be doing Trickster is that it's actually a very high chance that I'm going to league start with that myself and uh, that I will have a lot of up-to-date guides for it. So um, yeah, that's why I decided on that. But the other ones are really good as well. So we are going to start from scratch. Um, it's hard, I will say at the start of the video, it's hard to remember to cover everything because obviously I am an experienced player. So sometimes I might oh, not explain something enough. So I apologize for that ahead of time. But either way, we have Path of Excel installed and we are now going to click create character. I am just going to make uh, a standard character because we can't, um, there's an upcoming new league mechanic now in 3.20, but we can't start in that already. That unlocks in six days. So currently these are what the league mechanics look like now. That mechanic is not going to be available in six days. Um, but yeah, we're just going to make a standard character. So these are the characters you can choose with. We are going to go for this one. And just choose the name. So we are going to start with uh, a skill called Freezing Pulse pretty early. And um, very often people would do something like Orb of Storms and Storm Blast Mine because they're very, very strong. But we are actually going to level with cold skills just to make it super easy all the way. Anyway, you equip the weapon, put it in your weapon slot, and here you will find the first thing in Path of Exile. So. Path of Exile has a different skill system than other games like this that you might have experienced. If any of you have played like Diablo, etc., um, you don't like get skills and put skill points into them. Instead, skills here exist as gems. So this is the first gem that you achieve, and this is Viper Strike. So when I put that inside this socket on my gear, um, which is just a dagger you get uh, on the beach, you can see that the skill appears here. Now, by default, it looks like this, and your default attack will be on mouse button one. The reason this is annoying, and I'm going to tell you very instantly to switch that, I'll just show you real quick. Oh, my camera is a bit in the way for that, actually. I'll move it. There. Sorry. So, you'll see that while you're moving, you'll basically accidentally attack monsters while trying to move. So, the biggest tip I could possibly give you as a new Path of Exile player Put move only on mouse button one. So after that said, now you want to just put Viper Strike on your right click. And this is done just by left clicking the skill down here. And it doesn't matter if you put it everywhere. There's no reason to, but you can. And uh, the things that we've started with, we've started with Life Flasks, a Mana Flask, and Wisdom Scrolls. I usually move it up there. And um, so... Flasks in Path of Exile, they recharge when you kill enemies, when you go into town, and uh, they're going to be a pretty big part of your journey. Here, early on, you're presented with your first support gem, and this is how we modify active skill gems. So Viper Strike, the first skill I showed you, is an active skill gem. It gives us an ability. Support gems modify this. So for example, later, if you get something like a Fireball, you could add multiple projectiles, you can make them go faster, you can make the area of effect bigger, and you can modify the skill a lot. We'll talk about that after killing this guy. 
So this is the first boss you're going to fight, and actually, surprisingly, fairly challenging. Whenever you're on around 30% mana or 30% life, you want to click your hotkeys or your flask um, to avoid dying. And it's actually quite easy to die. And now already we're presented by a boatload of items. So none of these are particularly useful for us. We are going to be a spellcaster. And these are you know, mostly weapons and stuff. However, you'll notice now already that these items are blue. So that involves the rarity system of Path of Exile. You have normal white items, uh, which are, you know, plain item bases. Then you have uh, magic items, which are blue. You have rare items that are yellow. And then you have orange or brown items that are unique or legendary. Um, and there are no set items as such in Path of Exile. Some uniques will act as pseudo set items, but they're not the same as, for example, Diablo 3. So, identifying something like this item will make them sell for alterations. So we can like open up the first vendor we see, and you can see that the unidentified item will give us transmutation shards, and the identified item will give us alteration shards. And we're going to go very, very in-depth through this video and talk about each piece of currency we find, how it works, etc. And there is a lot. Goodbye. There is a lot. Um, I am going to try to find some empty tabs to move because... I think it's best that I play, assuming that the player has not bought any tabs. So we're just going to play with these four. And honestly, we shouldn't even need one for this. Right. So. Let's see. Um, one thing that we can do very early is just look through the vendor, Nessa. The reason for that uh, is because she could already be selling a magic weapon with plus one to all level of cold spell skill gems, which would be huge. So if you do find that, that's great. Other than that, what we're looking for is we are now going to talk about sockets and links. So if you see uh, this wand here has a red, a blue, and a green socket. And if you see that link between them, that means that they're linked. So if you see here, this is just two linked. It doesn't have that third link. And this is really important for support gems. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to buy this. And um, just so that I have a second one, I'll buy this as well. But ideally, we do one, two, three link. Take care. There. Fine work. We're going to talk to Tarkley, and he will give us our first support gem. I am just Stay going to up. start off with Freezing Pulse to keep it super simple and easy. And as part of this as well, I will try to not over-explain things. This yes. that I'm That's sadly having to open right sense. now has nothing to do with anything. I'm just adding that to get rid of the points. This is just, it's a league I don't normally play. It has nothing to do with you if you're a new player. You won't have it. But either way, we're going to run through this area now. You generally don't kill a lot in this first zone, the coast. And you can see that I've put freezing pulse on my right click. Generally, that's where I always click my main ability that I'm going to be using. And uh, yeah, the first zone I normally run through. There are a couple of dangerous monsters here. The cannibals you see that throw rocks and some of them throw firebombs can actually kill you pretty easy. There's also a unique boss here that is fairly dangerous. And um, quite often it's uh, easy to get stuck on a bunch of monsters and killed here. Especially if you start fighting them and let them get around you. So we're just going to run through this unique boss. We are just running to the end of the zone where we're going to meet our first waypoint. This is very similar to other games where as soon as we've clicked it, we can teleport back to this later. Here. We're now going to go to the mud flats. This is also a very dangerous zone. I'll put on some background music as well. Whoops. So now, well, a little bit scared of getting attacked here, but we're going to open the skill tree. This looks very, very overwhelming, and that is why um, this is a good video to follow, because obviously you can just copy exactly what I am doing. And in all I all my build guides that I create for new players, it's very step-by-step -step where we show you the first like five or ten points at a time, so that you don't just get like, here's the finished build, good luck. 
Um, and all these points do like loads of different things. So you have travel nodes or small nodes. They can do things like stats, a little bit of damage. They aren't super impactful. They're pretty, you know, mild. They're supposed to be filler nodes so that you don't just get really good ones. Then we have notables, like trickery. You can see that these are starting to do a little bit more, like damage, critical strike chance, and dex and intelligence, which are the stats for Path of Exile. We'll talk about that later. Um, and then you have um, another thing. We'll cover masteries when we get to it. And then we also have the biggest ones that are keystones. And these are like super impactful. They will sometimes disable or enable things and are very, very strong. So we're going to start off now by taking the damage and energy shield. You can see that I now have energy shield around my character. So this has already added a new system for you to learn about. So energy shield is like a second health bar or an extra health bar that acts slightly differently than life. There's no potion that we have that can recover this. This recovers after a few seconds when you haven't taken damage. So if I get hit now, you can see that my energy shield goes away, but it starts recharging. And then there are other things you can do to recover that later, such as leech, regen. And uh, don't be disillusioned if you already start dying a lot in this zone. It uh, is actually quite dangerous and yeah, very easy to die here. You'll actually often see even experienced players get killed from like six or seven rows. And when we now click that quest item, you'll see that um, all the Roas in close proximity will be enraged and be even more dangerous. So generally you want to kill all the Roas before. So now we've found a Coral Ring. We'll just equip that. By default, auto equip is enabled. So your character will pick up and equip every item that you pick up that it can. By how much this place wants me to and a good thing to know early on, you can see that I'm not just standing in one location like this. And casting spells. You see that I'm trying to move a little bit between each spell cast. Also an easy thing or important thing to pick up early. Uh, and that is because the monster will obviously target where you were. So if you are attack moving a lot, it can be easier for it to um, miss you. And honestly, the biggest lesson, defensive lesson that I could teach you, moving in circles in Path of Exile um, is pretty much the strongest thing for defense. Funnily enough, there's only one boss that anticipates your movement, and that is actually this starter side boss in the area. Actually has the strongest AI more than any endgame boss. It's very interesting. So we'll talk about that when we get there, but yeah. We now have a second seal point. We're going to continue here with damage and energy shield, and you saw that I now got a new helmet. Feel free to put on any item that you find early that like gives you any sets. Um, we would particularly be looking for sockets like blue blue green or blue green green like that's how we're going to refer to colors and sockets on items especially with them being linked and just picking up things with blue and green sockets are really really good and some people would tell you not to equip a chest early on honestly that does not matter for a new player what that does it gives you three percent movement speed penalty and that's more of a speed running tactic that you don't need to worry yourself about you can actually put the chance to poison support gem here on the freezing pulse and the way that we see that this is enabled, you see that new letter that's added to it? That means that it is connected. And we can go a little bit more in-depth on support gems later. We're also going to equip the medium mana flask. And I know it's very top-heavy with explanation later on, and we go a little bit slow in the start. But early on, there's a lot to explain, and I'm assuming a lot of people are playing that have never played the game before. So later, it'll be more about rushing and playing through. Um, it can take a new player as much as... 10 to 20 hours to get to the campaign, or 52 hours if you're a professional game reviewer for IGN. Or PC gamer, I can't remember. I think it was IGN. But um, most people will take between 10 and 20 hours to get through the... Oh yeah, 74 from IGN, that was it. Most people will take 10 to 20 hours to get through the campaign. Here we have uh, the first currency drop that we've found. So this is a chromatic orb. What this does is it will change all the colors of the sockets on an item. And if you're wondering if it has any preference, it is based on the stat requirement of the item. So early, this early, no item has the stat requirement, but items will require later on, say for example, 150 strength and zero intelligence, zero dexterity. And if something requires 150 strength, it is predominantly likely to roll red sockets. Dexterity for green and intelligence for blue. 
So in this first zone, we have um, three quest items that we need to pick up. Did I get all of them? Yeah, I did. <coughs> <coughs> and an important thing to mention early, you might have noticed that, well, Zizrin, how do you know? Where did you pick up this quest? Well, that's a really cool thing about Path of Exile. Something that I have really, really disliked about other games was that you always need to go to a quest giver to get the quest. In Path of Exile, there is only like two or three things where you need to talk to someone before you do something, or only once. Um, in Path of Exile, you can generally just do the quest. So that's really, really good. And there is also a lot of optional stuff. You'll already see here that we have the Fetid Pool as a side quest zone here, and we don't need to do that. That gives you some respec options later, but you can go back and do that at any time whenever you feel like you do need respecs. That's a really cool thing about Peewee. Um, as a new player, you're already going to have a lot of options, having quests and stuff here. Honestly, maybe I should have that open. Let's see. We're going to, now that we've gone and finished this quest and gone to the sun, we're going to go back to town and explain a few things. There is a lot to explain at the start. First off, Zizarin, why does your map look like that? So obviously I've been playing for a while. I already have some settings. So some things that I think are really good to do. Landscape transparency, having that all the way to the left, and map transparency. I think this gives your map a really clean look, really easy to see. Map zoom, play with that as you want. Some people like being really zoomed out. Some people like being really zoomed in. Um, auto centering map, show corner map. I have all those on. I turn off mouse wheel zooms. So you don't, well, actually I've unbounded in several places. Um, show clock, and most people will have show uh, quest tracking on by default. We can have that there just to make it easier. Um, other things that have turned on, always show sockets. This is quite nice. Without that, you have to hover over your items. Um, there are colorblind options here as well, if you would like. And then show full description, show life and mana levels. This is very, very good. Um, and then... Yeah, you can just see all the things that I've tapped here. There's also other mouse cursors as well as additional ones that you can buy if you find this one is hard. And you can make it larger. So there's loads of accessibility features, which is really, really good. The number one thing I want to talk to you about is a filter. The number one thing you want to do is you want to go to Filter Blade. And there should be instructions and stuff on how to install it there pretty easily. I don't can't remember if there are any default filters in the game, but you absolutely do need a filter. It is very, very important. What it does is it'll hide some items. It will highlight some items and most of them are very, very generic. It's very useful. I usually just make my own um, and they are always shared in my channel at exclamation mark filter. They're pretty easy to install. Um. And if you're having graphic issues or lag, try switching between different renders. Oh, and turn down shadows. Right. That being said, we have now finished one quest. Oh yeah, it's filterblade.xyz. We have now finished one quest and we now go to Tarkley and we can pick up Frostbomb. We actually can't because I forgot I'm not an occultist. Okay, right. I mean, we might as well pick up Orbistorms then. We're actually going to have to purchase Frostbomb, sadly. So we're going to go do that right now, real quick. Yes. Let's see, we're checking the vendor again. The vendor actually refreshes every single time that you level up. So we're now going to search with Control F for Frost Bomb and buy that. Honestly, just for simplicity's sake, I don't think I'm going to use Orb of Storms. Because I want this to be as easy for new players as possible. And I'm sure a few of you are already getting overwhelmed. Um, so I just reflexively talked to Bestel there and he actually gave me a quest, but you don't actually need to. No matter what, you will now be able to, um, do the quest that we're about to do without actually talking to Bestel. We are now going to click on the waypoint and we are going to go to the coast. So for hotkeys, I like having, um, I rebound this one, which is usually Q. I rebound that to space and that's where I normally keep my movement skill. And um, then I'm going to have Frost Bomb on W. Honestly, whatever you want and whatever you want to get used to is absolutely fine. Uh, I'm going to teach you a couple of things right now. If you click on your skill, you'll see that you have always attack without moving as an option. 
some games that you might have played in the past, you would be able to hold shift while attacking and it would attack in place. In Path of Exile, this is now um, enabled as an option. The difference here is that if you were attacking a monster over there that was out of range, it would move towards it before attacking. And that's what this option does. It's really, really good and it'll make the game feel a lot more like snappy and reactive. So I always make sure that I have that on every single thing. Uh, except for the movement skill dash. It is a green support gem. And if you have it enabled on that, it will make you go backwards. Um, so now we have Frost Blink. Very, very good movement ability. Um, I'm also going to show you another thing. If you ever feel like the enemies are being dangerous and you're like, oh, I wish I could like over level a little bit and get a little bit stronger, which spell skills such as the one we're doing right now are very good for that because they derive most of their power from being over leveled. Whereas uh, attack based weapons or attack based skills will get a lot of their power from gear. So uh, if you ever do want to over level, if you hold control while entering a zone, you will be prompted with this. And this will let you refresh instances and a very good thing to learn early so that you don't feel like you have to wait for a zone to reset. We're going to open the skill tree and we're going to pick a skill here in elemental damage. And if you are interested in, uh, for example, trying a different ascendancy, uh, which is like a um, subclass, uh, DS Lily, I believe, has um, a occultist build. That shouldn't be too out of date. Doesn't Frostbank also go backwards with attack without moving? It does not. It is only dash. Seeing as I have it enabled now. Frostbank, however, has a really cool thing where its cooldown will be better when you're using it inside of monsters. Learning every day, yep. The beautiful thing about Path of Excel is also that it changes so much. So, and the person that said that in chat is somebody with close to 20,000 hours. And that's a really cool thing about this game is that even if you have 20,000 hours in the game, the game changes so much and it's so vast that you are actually learning things. Sometimes during um, PoE lessons, I've had like, I remember there was one time where Gucci Pradas, who is literally one of the best players in the game, was like, what the fuck? I actually didn't know that. So that's kind of cool. Um... Right, so now you can see that our gems have leveled up. I think I've already leveled them up once automatically without thinking about it, because it's kind of second nature at this point. But um, if I, for some reason, did not want a skill to level up, I could right-click it. This is sometimes done because of stat requirements or more convoluted things that we'll talk about later. Um, and there is no way to automatically level skills unless you're on console. But we are going to left click Freezing Pulse. We obviously do want to level that. And you can see that the right click skill that we previously clicked is now here. Which we're going to left click because we do in fact want to level them. Um, so now Freezing Pulse gains a large amount of damage. And so does pretty much every spell skill. Learns er, gains, a gains a large amount of damage per level. And that's why it's really, really good to later on get like plus gem levels. The other ability that I've just picked up as well, Frost Bomb, not only does it do damage after a few seconds like a mine, but it actually lowers their Frost Coral resistance um, to make my Freezing Pulse do more damage. Now, this is a pretty hard boss. Do not be sad if you die to this. So I'm going to show a little bit. If I'm running just like this, you'll see that he will start predicting my movement. This is the only boss that does this. Nothing else. So if I run like this, he actually like has a really hard time hitting me. Because as you can see, he's now trying to hit. It, it's very funny to me that the first boss has this and nothing else in the game. It's very, very amusing. He's the only dude that can aim in Path of Exile. But uh, I just spam him down with Frost Bomb and uh, he dies pretty fast. I'm going to pick up all the items. And uh, then we're just gonna we can just log out to character selection and go back to town. You don't actually need to use portal scrolls. Normally, you probably won't see this big dice when you're playing. Normally, this is just basically old gear on standard. We're gonna use the scroll of wisdom to identify the boots. The reason we're doing that is that we really want to find movement speed boots. But at least we found some cold resist, and that leads me to talk about resistances in Path of Exile. 
We start off with zero resists, and later in the act, he will take a 30% penalty, and again later, another 30% penalty, just to make it easier to gear up through the campaign, whereas still keeping a challenging endgame. However, character resistances can go between 0 and 75. You can later change that, but for now, let's uh, keep in mind that 75 is your max resist. So, these two sets, this is your actual resist. So, let's say that I, from my gear, get 80% total cold resist. This would say 75, and this would say 80. The way that works is um, that you would basically be 5% overcapped. So, we'll show you that later when we are overcapped. And early on, you're basically not expected to get any resists. And later, you are expected to... Um, Later, you are expected to um, have 75 pretty early, ideally around 6 or 7. But as early as Act 2 or 3, you can um, you can get fully resist kept. Now, if this is not your first time playing Path of Exile, you already have a hideout, which is really, really good uh, and gives you a big up. But we are actually going to wait with using a hideout until we would naturally unlock it, which is late in Act 2. Um, you can actually already get things before that, though. So, but we will wait. I, uh, I really like when video guides don't say, oh yeah, it's easy, trust me. I like actually showing how it works in practice. So, uh, we are now going to get a reward from Nessa with a quick silver flask. This is just the only pick you're interested in here, and we put that on the 5 button. And, um, now we have some things we can choose here, different support gems. We are just going to pick up Onslaught, and we're going to use that early on. I'm just going to put that on Freezing Pulse. We can put the chance to Poison on Frostbomb, just because of the links I have. Um, and I'm also going to put the Padded Vesta on. Let's see, I'm not going to buy another one right now, but I am going to buy another skill called Arcane Surge. Plus one Wisdom Scroll, which I don't have. I'm technically cheating, so... Just for authenticity's no. sake, I'm going to destroy one Wisdom Scroll that pulled from my hidden stash where I have infinite currency. Um, I want to like... yeah. There. So, now, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put Frost Blink here and Arcane Surge here. And um, what this support gem does is, whenever I've used a total of 16 mana, I will get a little spell damage buff and some mana regen. And that is incredibly strong because it'll affect all my damage. And this is the first gem you're actually going to be right-clicking. The reason for that and the reason we don't want to level Arcane Surge is later on, let's say at level 20, which is the max level for gems, um, it would cost like, I can't remember, but it'll cost like 200 mana to practice, practice once, and that is going to be far and few between with our movement skill. Whereas what we'll end up with, we'll end up with wanting Arcane Surge at like maybe level 5? And that means that it'll proc every time I use my movement ability. So, very, very interesting. So that's the first and only skill that we'll do that with. Now we're going to sell pretty much every blue item, etc. to the vendor. We don't need to care that much about identifying things. That's not super important. Um, and I'm going to identify this iron ring and show another neat thing in Path of Exile, and that is vendor recipes. Some of these are incredibly useful to new players. So obviously we know we have the Superfluous Orb of Storms. Well, what we can do with that is we can sell the Orb of Storms with an Iron Ring. And you can do this with any blue gem, even once you buy for one Wisdom. And now we're actually getting a Sapphire Ring, which gives us Cold Resist. Which is what we want in this act. Uh, there's no reward from anyone else? No. No other rewards. So you're now told to clear the Fetid Pool. There's no reason to do so. We are going to go to the Submerged Passage. And we've also picked up, obviously, the Onslaught on our Freezing Pulse. You'll very quickly pick up on what that does. You see that I, soon as I kill something, I get a buff here. And that makes me a lot faster. Here we found something called a Chromed Item. And you see that the red, a green, and a blue in any order, but as long as a red, a green, and a blue are linked, um, what that means is that, um, Low on mana. what that means is that the, um, item will sell to a vendor for one chromatic orb. 
With every death, I live a little bit more. True shadow. So generally, the the item or sorry, the skill use that I'm doing at the moment is that I am like frost blinking a lot because that deals damage Just and moves me. And I'm spamming my frost bomb into large groups of monsters and then I'm freezing pulse spamming. So now we're going to right click Arcane Surge and that will now put it here. And we are going to keep leveling that. So we are going to just keep moving throughout. And you see that I'm trying to like not get stuck on monsters by as soon as monsters are sort of about to box me in, I will um, frost blink through them. And then the altar that I just picked up that made electricity around me, you'll find more and more of these. Some will give you other buffs such as making you larger and giving you health. Some will give you speed and they're generally guarded by a bunch of monsters. Until you pick up the altar, the altar is actually going to buff the monsters. We're now going to pick up more elemental damage. We are now moving into the ledge. Act 1 is very dangerous compared to the rest of the game. Honestly, it kind of gets easier the further you go. Kind of gets easier. So, we'll now see that we're now being attacked by blue monsters. Blue monsters count as three normal monsters. A yellow or rare monster counts as five monsters in terms of XP, approximately. So that means that sometimes if you see a really tanky yellow monster, that can be not worth killing because obviously it's very easy to kill five white monsters. Whereas blues are pretty much always worth killing and uh, a lot of your experience are gotten by killing blue packs. We're just going to keep moving through. Um, picking chests can be useful early on, but um, you don't want to be stuck doing too much. Like you don't want to be stuck like full clearing zones and things like that. It is important to know if you're having fun in a video game, you're playing it right. So if you do enjoy full clearing every single zone, absolutely do that if you would like to. Literally the only way to play a game wrong is to not have fun. I'm going to pick up another uh, one there. And uh, the hotkey to open the skill tree is P. Wii has like an insane amount of things in the game. The nice thing is to know that you don't need to interact with everything. It's okay to just be like, I'm going to wait with this because there's too much happening right now. And you're not going to miss out on a large amount. And generally, most people that play Path of Exile play on something called the Challenge League. So for example, the one that was currently there right now is called Lake of Calandra. And then the one that's coming is called Sanctum something. Um, we're going to put on a chain belt here for more energy shield. Um, there. And uh, they reset every three months. So the, the really good thing about that, like obviously it is quite time intensive to have to start over every three months. Most people probably play for a month or two and then take a break. But it is very, very refreshing. And that also means that there are some games where I've like, you know, you long term play and you felt like some decision you made when you weren't a experienced player has like a permanent outcome, right? It ends up like being something and oh, I regret that I did that. What's nice about the resets is, you know, you're just learning. It's just a constant learning experience and it doesn't end up being very upsetting when it does reset that often. But those that don't like resets at all, there is standard league. I wouldn't recommend starting on that. But if you don't like the resets after playing your first softcore challenge thing, you can continue playing on standard as all your characters are moved there afterwards. Alright, let's see. There, and now we're going to pick up our first notable. We get 20% damage, 20% crit chance, and 10 dex and int. So Dex and Int and Strength will be, uh, they do give us some stats and they will also be used to letting us know if we can equip or not equip something. So Strength, you can hover over, it gives 2 life equals, uh, or sorry, 2 Strength equals 1 life, 5 Strength equals plus 1 melee physical damage, and uh, 2 Int equals 1 mana, 
5 int equals plus 1% energy shield, 1 dex equals 2 accuracy, and 5 dex equals 1 evasion. And like I said, these are also used for determining colors on gear. They're also... Um, they're also used for whether we can equip gems or items. Early on, you want to pick up pretty much every currency you find, like wisdoms, portals, transmutes, everything. And then, as you start learning and stuff, eventually, uh, like I said, the campaign can take anywhere from 10 to 20 hours. Um, for experienced players in a complete new league start setting, I think the world record is something like an hour 30. I think my personal best is 2 hours and 3 minutes. So once you like learn, you can do it a lot faster. There's no alternative leveling for the campaign. You do have to go through that for each character you want to level. That's why a lot of people do encourage like learning some form of speed leveling tactic. Here we're just going to run past because this goat is actually pretty dangerous. We don't want to fight that. We don't want to fight the skeleton archer. We're just going to run through. And uh, Frostbank King is really nice to get away from things too. We're going to put on the large mana flask. We currently have no uh, bigger than small life flask, and this is pretty bad. Now, something that's interesting, we actually already get a quest reward. A lot of people think that you get this quest reward from um, killing Brutus, but you actually get it just by entering a lower prison. So now we have added lightning damage support. So what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to move my freezing poles with my frost blink. And actually, let's see if we can get... Perfect. This is a blue, blue, blue. But I can't afford that. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to buy this blue, blue, and then unlinked blue. Ideally, I do want this, but I can't afford that, and I don't want to cheat. Let's see. So we're going to move some gems around. I'll show you what our final setup ends up being. We're going to have Arcane Surge here with Frost Blink, linked together in a blue, blue. We will have Freezing Poles with Added Lightning, um, and then with Onslaught. Boom. Then we'll just keep Frost Bomb, and we can have that over here with a chance to poison. That's not a big deal. The poison damage is very negligible. I think it'll give us a 0.6% damage increase or something like that. But it's there. So, now you can see that these Chrome items are selling for Chromatic Orbs. Very nice. And uh, we'll just sell that for Wisdom Scrap. Boom. While we live, we are blessed. And then there's nothing else that we get at the moment. However, we do have 7 Wisdom Scrolls. And Nessa sells life flask. So we're going to buy a large life flask. Boom. Put that on. And that is going to be really nice against the upcoming boss, Brutus. Now, where do we go? Right? We can go down. We can go here. I am going to take more damage because we're, we don't need that much life this early. We will take some soon, but we're going to go take more damage. Can you explain why you cannot afford that? I do not have a blacksmith whetstone. We haven't covered blacksmith whetstones yet because we haven't found them. Now we're going to make our way through the lower prison. And there is no, uh, there is a lot of currencies in Path of Exile. We're going to go over all of them as we find them. But, um, um, what was I going to say? Path of Exile does not have an overarching currency such as gold. It has, um, smaller currencies. And people will use a lot of the smaller currencies to trade with each other in a barter system. But there is no like overarching gold that is like everybody wants. There will be like endgame currencies that we'll talk about later, like divine orbs. There will be chaos orbs. There will be mirrors. So there are multiple different things as well as just really priced items that people trade in, making for a pretty cool economy. Right. Um, oops. I keep misclicking things. Now we're going to do a fairly uh, loved, and everybody loves this mechanic. This is called traps. And then, as you can see, you have to run through the traps. They do damage to you. The damage is actually percentage-based. Literally, everybody's favorite mechanic. Um, and um, you have to do six of these for being able to do the normal lab, which is basically where we're able to get our subclass. Here we have our first rare item, I believe, and it is a claw. We're just going to identify that so that we can sell it for alteration shards. It's not something that's good for us. We want one. 
Ugh. Generally, you do want to pick up every blue and rare item early on. So, once we've clicked this, it'll show it'll fill in that. These will be unfilled. And uh, we have to do all of those. There. That is all we need to do on this level. And uh, you could also leave that for later and come back for it. Now, for example, killing unique such as this can be okay early on. There's nothing wrong with it. They do drop um, some gear, but you know, you're know you most of the time not going to get anything good. We just got a blue item that we're going to vendor here, and we're going to move through. Frost Bomb and Frost Bang is leveled up, giving us a little bit more damage. Now we're in the upper prison. There's no quest reward for entering here. But on this level is the next boss, actually fairly dangerous, called Brutus. Brutus was put here by Chavron to ward the prison. And then she resurrected him or some weird shit. I'm not super into the lore. He's basically another boss's pet. So, um, you will maybe early notice that I am running straight to the next level. Um, and Path of Exile kind of prides itself on being random, but it is not really random. Each zone pretty much only has less than 60 layouts. So once you've played uh, over 20,000 hours, they actually become quite easy to memorize. So at some point, I feel like very early, you start like reflexively running towards where you know it is, but you're not able to explain it. But then eventually you will just know every single layout by default. Now, it's actually very common in a lot of these and they will appear super random in the start. It's very normal to get super stuck and get a lot more over leveled. So, you know, if you feel like this video is going too fast, obviously like pause and keep it along where you are. But um, yeah, it is not completely random and you will learn them eventually. We're going to pick up Elemental Focus and being level 9 before Brutus is really good. Um, because that means that we've gotten that skill point. I need another 18,000 hours. Also, sorry for everyone on Twitch if I'm not reading out your alerts. I'm just trying to keep this clean and teachy. I do appreciate all the support. Thank you guys so much. We'll take breaks at some point too, because I'm definitely going to need bathroom breaks. No, here there are a bunch of like chests and barrels and stuff, you can open them and get rewards. Um, I'm not super, not super important. So here we're going to find the first boss. And at the start, I'm just not going to attack anything. And I'm going to teach you a little bit about dodging or running in a circle. So they've actually fairly recently changed how bosses interact with that. Their, their damage zone is literally where, um, literally where they appear to be. So even by a little bit of movement, even kind of late, you're very easily dodging out. It has to literally look like he hits you for you to hit you. Another thing that's kind of interesting, you might notice that this boss now has no abilities. That's because he's at 100%, and most bosses in Bath of Exile will not use their abilities until they've been damaged, and they do have thresholds for when they basically learn their abilities. So once I start actually dealing damage to him here, which I'm going to try to do while moving um, and run in a circle around him, um, like we want to keep attacking while moving in a circle. And uh, he will then start gaining abilities. So now we're going to start killing the boss. And now you'll quickly see that he will get new moves. Oh! I did not mean to click that. He will also now try to hook you in. He will do an AoE and he will do a slam. Those are the three abilities that he has. He'll always hook after the triple slam. And then he has like one big like kill everybody slam. If you move a little bit, that hook always misses. There, that's the like kill everything slam. That will probably kill you. Oh my god, that's so annoying. Stupid order of protection. But as you can see, just by moving a little bit here, it pretty, pretty much trivializes the entire fight. And uh, there's not that much he can do. And this is a very good lesson to keep in mind for literally the entire game. We get a bunch of items here. We don't even have room for items. 
um, there. Right. So, a really interesting thing. You don't need to go to the Warden Chambers in the next zone. This waypoint, the next one, is already unlocked. So, I am now just going to log out and go to town. Because the next waypoint is already unlocked. So, now we got a bunch of stuff. Like I said, you want to pick up every blue and rare item. Because now we're going to identify all the rare items. We are actually running a little low on Wisdom Scrolls. So we are not going to identify the blue items. We do want both transmutes and uh, uh, alterations. Right, we didn't get a one. That is actually not a terrible scepter, but we are not going to use it. So now we have some currency herbs that we can start explaining. We have alchemy shards. We'll explain that when we get a full alchemy. But a transmute and... Items will generally say what they do on them. It'll upgrade a white item to a magic item. So we'll use normal and white, magic and blue, rare and yellow interchangeably. Important to learn early. Um, but yeah, this changes a normal item into a magic item. And uh, a magic item can have two stats, one prefix and one suffix. So we already have one magic item. I'm now going to hold alt. And while I'm holding alt, you'll see that it has mosquito of the Inuit. And the Inuit is the Cold Resist, the Mosquito is the Evasion Rating. It actually looks like three stats, but it is actually only two. It's called a Hybrid Stat. Um, we're going to check the vendor again. We have leveled up since last time. Um, I still don't have a Blacksmith Whetstone. Nothing else interesting that I want to buy. We live, we are blessed. And we now, after killing Murtis, we do get our first actually really nice movement ability. Nothing else that we really need. We do get auras here. Why? Why? Right. Inland on the Stay sharp so we're going to pick up Flame Dash. Uh, another thing that is useful, I usually don't bother with it, but you could search the vendor for movement skill. Uh, but there are no movement skill boots. You see that the shield has 3% movement speed, Stay but sharp out there. we don't care about that. So, now that's uh, oh, and the alterations, that changes a blue item. So if I use that on the boot, it would uh, change it. Right, now we're going to teleport to Prisoner's Gate. And especially since we get level 10, you'll see that we'll like speed up a lot. And I will try to go as fast as I can while explaining because, well, I don't want the video to actually be 16 hours. Just need a moment that is why we sometimes that. stop these. I'm having like issues with the servers lately. There's only like one London server that's bad. Let me go remake the zone real quick. Sometimes um, I haven't had server issues in like three years. So you know, I might try um, I might try switching to Milan or something temporarily. Been having some issues with London. Bad routing pathways or something. Let's see. Anyway, we'll we'll sell these from our transmute shards. Goodbye. And we leveled up, so we might as well check the vendor. Um We uh this is perfect. This costs one wisdom and it is three linked. And then there. Uh what we're gonna do now, we don't really need blue blue reds, so we're gonna use one chromatic orb. We now have a blue blue green, which is great. We do want that. And uh there's a couple of things we can do now. So we can, yes, we're level 10. So we are going to transmute it and we can show you a really, really cool recipe. So I'm going to hold shift and unstack the alterations. You can also hold shift and unstack your alterations in this way uh, to like drop them one at a time. But we're going to take the sapphire ring we made earlier, one uh, wand, which needs to be blue, and one alteration. Yes. And then we're going to sell this for 6 to 10 cold damage to spells. Now, this is not actually super important for our skill. The reason this is not super important, and let's see. Let me move this real quick. Um, just so we can keep the arcane surge there. Now, remember, it actually doesn't matter where the gems are. That's very important to note. Because I realize some people might think, did I move the freezing pulse there to get the damage? No, this is global. Um, uh, let's see, what was I about to explain? Oh yeah, this uh, the 6 to 10 cold damage to spells isn't super important for our build. 
because we are going to do a slightly different type of damage scaling. But it is very good for a lot of builds and it is okay for us early on. So you might as well at least get 1-1. One, one. It will make a difference. Uh, we're also going to switch out Frostblink with Flame Dash. I'm going to re-hotkey that. Personally, I really like having hotkeys on mouse button 5, which I have on the second bar. If you hold control down, you are now graded by a whole new bar, which will have control Q, control W, control E. Uh, I have rebound, instead of it being control E, I have um, rebound that to just mouse button 5. And what that does is that I, I can show real quick. I'll just go to a zone. Uh, even without holding control, you can use that new bar. And actually, a lot of veteran players think that you are forced to hold control to access that bar. But you are actually not. You can just rebind it to numpad 1 if you want and then use it. Um, and having a skill, if you're used to having a skill in several places, you can have it in, in multiple places too. Like, for example, normally I would have another movement ability called Shield Charge. Um... Uh, I will normally have an ability called Shield Charge on Space, and then another one at Flame Dash on Mouse Button 5. So, it's not too bad to have one in multiple places, so that if your muscle memory is like, Ooh, I need to move, you'll click no matter where. Let's see, now we're going to go pick up the Life Roll here. But yeah, you do not need any button to... Like, you don't need to show the skill bar to use it, is the important thing. So we're going to continue now from Prisoner's Gate. We'll make a new instance because obviously I was having some server issues. And you see that Flame Dash is a little bit different than Frostblink. Frostblink actually helps us with damage and clear. Flame Dash not so much, but uh, it is a better movement ability. It does do a decent amount of damage if we go directly through something though. And then pretty soon we are going to get our first pulled dot skills. So the reason that Flame Dash is uh, better in a lot of ways than um, Frostblink is that Frostblink only has one charge. Frostblink can save up to three. And now an interesting thing to learn early, you'll notice that when I'm clicking it and if you're clicking it, it feels very good. It feels instant. However, sometimes it'll feel laggy or weird. Why is that? So that is because basically as long as you aren't using them back to back, they will be an instant spell. But if you are casting them back to back, then there will be a cooldown on its usage. So that's why you will normally see that I am going to use it periodically and not spam it. So I usually use it like this, wait a few seconds, use it again, and you sort of get into the feeling of when you can instant cast it. So. Now that we are here in the ship graveyard, we are going to pick up two skill point quests. One that we've actually ignored, and we're just going to do both of them now. Uh, the first one's going to be a lot easier now because we're overleveled, and it'll show you a little bit why overleveling on spells can be so strong. Nice, greater life fast. That means we've found a greater life and a greater mana. That'll be really good for the upcoming boss, Marvale. Look at the scepters. Being either scepters or wands, both are okay. Just depends on like what stats we find on things. Stats that we would be looking for would be plus two cold gems or like plus cold damage over time multiplier. Really, really interesting thing. This unique boss is uh, guarding. This quest item, you don't need to kill it. You can, just, you can just leave. A lot of people actually kill that because they think they have to. You don't. Now we're just going to run to the next zone. We've already picked up the waypoint in this. And then we can waypoint back. I love how when people in chat don't know about it, it's great. Now we're going to waypoint back to the ship graveyard, and after that we're going to go to the submerged passage. Pick up the skill point there. Boom! We got Blood Siphon, giving us a bunch of life, as well as uh, life per enemy killed. Uh, I guess he could be up here. 
Oh, oh, that's a lot of enemies. Ow. Oh, ow. Yeah, Act 1 is a little brutal. Nice. Okay, well, even if it is a dead end, which it might be. Oh, maybe not. Um, we are now able to explain new essences. So I'm trying to, like, not overwhelm people because the we guide could be 40 hours. But uh, I, in this guide, I'm going to try to just explain things as we find them. So, an essence is I click it three times and I get to fight a monster and it'll have some abilities. It'll be sometimes quite tanky and dangerous. But we get a crafting resource um, when we kill it. So, an essence is an item that will turn a normal item early on. It'll turn a normal item rare or um, yellow and give it up to six stats, at least four. And um, it'll guarantee one stat. And it tells you on the item what it guarantees. So for example, if I use it on jewelry, one to two physical damage to attacks. If I use it on a weapon, one to three physical damage to attacks. And uh, the other stats will be random. Especially these early ones are useful early on and you don't want to use them on late game items. It actually is over there. I must have just missed it. Path of walking. At least four affixes. Yeah, whenever you use a, uh, any of the things turning anything rare, it'll be at least four stats. No exceptions. At least four, max six. Can never give you two and rare or three. Always six. Here we go. There you are, Fair Graves. Yeah, maybe. It was a bit of a weird layout. Right. So now we're going to talk to Trust Captain Fair Graves. He betrays us. I want to take a quick me. toilet break after this. this On YouTube, they can just skip that. I would not do the same, Fairgraves. I would not. I would never betray our friendship. Technically, he asks you to go into that cave and get that thing, and then when you come back, he surprisingly betrays you. I almost feel sorry for you, Fairgraves. Right, we don't have room for those. We're just going to log out. Right, we're going to identify the boots, hope for movement speed, and we'll identify the longsword. Rare items sell for more alterations than, um, um, blues. Let's see. We're not actually going to pick up a quest reward there. There, we'll just sell everything. We can also sell Frost Blink with an Iron Ring to make another Sapphire because we are coming up against a cold boss right now. There, we switched out our flasks. You do want a greater life flask and greater mana for this boss. Two mana flasks isn't bad. Checking vendors, nothing interesting. Right. Now it's important that you have sold enough random blue items that you have one transmute. If you don't, um, if you don't, then you need to go back and farm. That's already explained earlier, Corbison. Oh, and if anyone watching on Twitch sees anything or has any question of something that I've already explained earlier, feel free to like reply to them so I don't need to like keep repeating for people watching on YouTube as well. So a lot of things were already explained earlier. Right, so we are now going to buy Creeping Frost. And we are going to buy Winter Tide Brand. Do I really not get either of these? Occultist at least gets one of them, which is quite nice. So you don't like have to actually have transmutes. So we are going to buy Wintertide Brand and Creeping Frost. Wintertide Brand is not something we are going to keep long term. Um, we are actually not going to use that very long. Ideally, we honestly want more transmutes. So we are going to have to pick up even more items, blue and rare, and sell them unidentified to get more um, transmutes. So like I said, very transmute heavy. Occultist has it a little bit easier, but thankfully it's very easy to get. 
We are now going to stop using Freezing Pulse. We also don't really benefit from, well, any of these support gems anymore. I suppose we can keep Onslaught on Creeping Frost by now. And uh, Winter Tide Brand isn't affected by it at all. So we'll just do this for now. Um, ideally, we would want Blue, Blue, Blue. And then we could have Winter Tide Brand, Creeping Frost, and um, Thingy. Yes. Um, FXC. This is a support gem we want. We are now going to use a um, support gem, or sorry, a chrome here. Goodbye. Boom. That's nice. That's nice for later. That is nice for later. We have no use for these anymore. We can just fender them. Uh, I'm going to take a quick toilet break. Um, we are going to fill out the life and then coordination here. This gives us some attacking cast speed, which is nice. Attack speed will be nice later. Won't do anything for us now. Uh, but yeah, quick break, and then um, you can skip through it on YouTube. Be right back.
I am back. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that I am not engaging with any league mechanics during this at all. And league mechanics very often will give things like transmutes, alterations, uh, unique items early. So uh, assuming that you're playing on the upcoming Sanctum League, you should have a way better time than I'm going to have in this. So everything should be even easier for you. I just like... At some point, I started growing tired of people saying something was easy in a video and then using like perfect gear. So I figured if the player has a better experience than what they're watching, that's going to be better. Anyway, we're going to gonna talk to Bestel. We need to do that to pick up the skill point. And then we are going to eat that. <gasps> we're now going to go to the submerged passage and grab another skill point. It's actually like, I've been playing RuneScape lately. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have new skills now. Right, uh, we're going to move Frostbomb to E. Because that's no longer my, like, number one thing. Uh, I will keep Winter Tide Brand on my right click for now and Creeping Frost on W. So, Creeping Frost, what that does is it hits with a projectile that actually has a hit, I'm pretty sure. It has a hit part two, right? Yes, it does a hit part two. But what's really strong is that you can see it puts down a chilled ground and that puts down a damage over time thing. Now, if I spam creeping frost like this, this will not stack, right? If I hit 10 times, I am not doing 10 times more damage. It's only the one time of the damage over time on the ground. However, what will happen is I've actually never noticed that Creeping Frost moves before. I've never paid attention to that. That's very funny to me. Um, 25,000 hours in the game, by the way. Makes sense with the name. Um, but yeah, anyway. Winter Tide Brand and any other thing that adds a ground effect, they will stack. So, um, so if I do Winter Tide Brand and Creeping Frost, those two will stack. And that is a really, really nice thing. So you can see now, like, things are going to be dying very quickly. So Winter Tide Brand is a little bit delayed damage. Like I put it down and then it starts like exploding like a flower. And then later on we're going to get another seal called Cold Snap and finally Vortex. Now this build is a little bit button intensive. But it actually is very strong and I'll show you. It is actually very strong without being button intensive too. Because what this build can do later is it can auto cast Vortex and that is very nice. So it isn't the absolute best build for somebody like if you have wrist issues, arm issues, or if you're somebody that's like missing limbs and maybe you're playing with foot pedals. It's not the absolute best build for that. For that I would recommend either minion builds or Righteous Fire. Righteous Fire, which I'll be doing a build collab with Pox, is absolutely the best choice for that. Um, because all you have to do is move your character around. Um, so worth keeping in mind, but this is actually going to be a pretty solid choice for very little clicking. It says creeps. What if you use voice activation for skills? Uh, I'm not very familiar with that. I have helped quite a lot of people that have DM'd me and have like, you know, missing limbs and for example, another player called No Hands Ken. Uh, I haven't talked to him in a while now, but uh, he plays Path of Exile on Hardcore, and he was asking if I could help him make a build because he plays with a straw. He's paralyzed from the neck down. Um, I actually set him up with a Blade Vortex build back in the day, and that worked pretty well. What is uh It's easy to not think about if you yourself have all your limbs. That can be hard to play some builds. Alright, let's grab all of these. As we said, we do need transmutes. We'll we log out, go back to town. We don't really need to waste portal scrolls on anything. Uh, let's see. Hello. We'll just vendor all of this. We already have a better flask. And we want to pick up an efficacy. Boom! Now, like I said, the onslaught doesn't really matter for us, so we're moving our creeping frost and winter tide brand to that. 
that gives that a support gem. And what FXC does is it's 15% more damage over time and 15% increased skill effect duration. And normally, I know you don't really need to know exactly what everything does. And for our build guides, that is very much the case that you're, we're just telling you what to do. Uh, this is just a little bit extra explanation so you can learn. But yeah, obviously, um, talk to Tarkley and grab the skill point. It obviously works very well just to be told what to do. You don't need to know why to do Farewell. if you don't want to. I'm going to check the vendor again. I usually don't do this for too long because it does get pretty tedious. Yeah, we're planning on doing a full run, ideally. Unless I run out of time for some reason. I normally do these runs till at least Act 9. The reason I sometimes stop at Act 9 is it's very common to grind there for 2 or 3 hours before finishing maps. Um... If I have enough time, we will go all the way to Act 10. But like I said, when you farm 2 or 3 hours in Act 9 for levels, then Act 10 becomes literally super easy. Um, right, we're going to start traveling up here. This is also a very cool teaching build because it has so many different things we can teach. No entropy. So if you're asking if there's any diminishing returns, I can talk a little bit about how levels and Path of Exile work. So, um, by default, you get full XP for a zone four levels above or four levels below your zone. That means that if you're level four... Um, no, sorry, it starts at three. If you are level four, you get full XP at a level one zone or a level seven zone, right? So if you're in a level 8 zone as a level 4 character, you will get a little bit of an XP penalty. Uh, we're just going to move through this zone while talking. There's not much to say except kill things and move. Um, and then every six, six, every 16 levels, this number goes up by 1. So that means that once you are level 16, you will get full XP at level 20 and at level 12. And that keeps going. Like that, that amount keeps going. So at 32, you'll get full XP in a 37 zone. So there are diminishing returns, but even like if you're one level below the zone, you basically get like 8% less experience. Then it's like 16 or 20. And eventually, yeah, you will be getting very little XP. Now we're going to go into the Cavern of Anger. So there are two caverns. And you'll start seeing like ghosts of the boss luring you towards her. Because Mervale is a siren. Mervale is a siren. She used to be the most beautiful woman in all the lands. And she fell in love with the duelist Dereso. And uh, after winning a tournament, Dereso gave Mervale... A ruby necklace, the star of Rayclass, as a token of his love. And Mervale was delighted. But Teresa and Mervale didn't know that the amulet was, amulet was cursed. And she started growing scales. And she is now no longer the most beautiful woman. She is a fish creature. Throwing in a little bit of lore there. Poor fishwife. And the star of rare class is actually an amulet you can get in Path of Exile with a vendor recipe. Very cool. Also gives you a teleport ability. You love the lore? Bar recipe? It's like lightning warp corrupted level 20 or something. Gives you her teleport ability. So, um, I should stop damaging and explain Mervail a little bit. So, as you can see, I'm already, like, very, very, like, not getting hit. And she has, like, she fires, like, fish ice spear towards you. Um, that will hurt quite a lot and can freeze you and kill you very, very easily. She also does, like, a, uh, ice storm that will slow you and hurt you. And that's pretty much all she does in this stage. She also, oh... Sorry. She summons statues at 75, 50, and 25% as well. Um, but yeah, other than that, like I said, moving in circles and never backtracking. Very, very strong. And then she teleports when she summons the statues.
Okay, we'll just move around like this. She's pretty easy, especially if you have a little bit of cold res. Even with just a sapphire ring, should be more than enough. We will just keep Wintertide Brand and just keep cycling through our abilities and trying to keep the chilled ground up for a nice damage over time effect. Now that she dies, we try wrapping up all the statues. They actually hurt quite a lot. And now we're in stage two. We can wait a little bit with damaging her hair, but you can see that she creates a large ground effect. I do you want to avoid that? Sorry, I didn't sleep that much. You want to avoid the ground effect, and then she will fire like projectiles at you. They will hurt quite a lot, and then she does a big tidal wave. That is pretty much all her abilities, and she does also summon again at 75, 50, and 25%. This summon is a lot more scary, and she will summon a bunch of suicide bombing squids. Those red ones. And there's the big tidal wave, and that is all she does. Um, oh, actually, you're right. If you're in very, very close range, she will do a scream that will slow you and do a lot of damage. Only happens when you're in close range. Boom. Ooh, rare boots. This is very good. We're going to identify the boots. We're always hoping for movement speed, but at least we got double resist and life. Death has too many damned places to hide in a forest. We will identify the belt. So we're going to just like keep running now. Now I can very easily just like throw down a few winter tide brands. We can have a total of three. And this is mostly a very early leveling ability. As soon as we hit level 28, we are scrapping this. Uh, you know, you can already see that you have a lot of ways of comfortably clearing white monsters. Very, very fun and enjoyable ability early. I would say it is actually even more fun later on as a witch occultist because you get something called Profane Bloom and honestly one of the most enjoyable things in Path of Exile. So if you do want to try that, would heavily recommend that as well. The differences between the classes is basically going to be occultist is better for clearing and can be a little bit more fun. Trickster is extremely defensive and elementalist does more damage. We have no more wisdom scrolls, so what do we do now? We're going to split the stack of portal scrolls that we don't use a lot. Uh, we're going to have one stack of seven. We're going to sell those to the vendor for wisdom scrolls. We are going to sell armor scraps for another two wisdom scrolls. And we're going to vendor all of these because we don't really need to ID them. And that belt is kind of meh, so we don't care. Megan Global Chat. No. Already explained, sorry. All right, we're going to keep assigning skill points. We're moving up here. All right, we are going to go into the den. You can skip this. I quite like doing it because it gives you a second Quicksilver. More speed, more fun. This is the first strong box that we're encountering, and. Um, when we click the strong box, three monsters, you, you could actually use a transmute all and enroll it. You should not do that. Uh, but when we click this now, we are going to be ambushed. And we have to kill all the monsters with a white circle around them. Once they're all dead, then, uh, some loot will pop up. And there are special strong boxes that you'll encounter later. Things that give you gems or currency, etc. Okay, I guess. I wasn't planning on explaining that right now, but I guess we can. Let me kill this boss real quick. It is nice to explain things as they happen. I explained that too, actually. Right, we'll kill this- oh, and a ghost. Okay, so that thing that went inside the boss is a ghost. It is sort of Path of Exile's version on loot goblins. Um, sort of. Um, and um, they will- Possess something and then buff it, make it scarier, but also give it more loot. Right. We're going to just keep moving here to the next waypoint. We're not going to go back to town now and collect our reward. We're going to just progress through to the next zone and get the waypoint from there. And do notice that I'm not like picking up any quest or anything. We're just, we're just doing quests for people, whether they want us to or not. Nice. Finally, we have movement speed boots. Even though we are losing resists, 
movement speed, especially if you're a softcore player, is absolutely what you're going to want. So many things to explain. Okay, so the yellow icons... I'll explain that first, then I'll do the other thing. Because this is here right now. So the yellow icon on the map right now is a league mechanic called Bestiary. Um, INR will appear and he wants you to capture beasts for him. Bestiary is actually very, very powerful early on because it guarantees you unique items. So what you really want is the red beast, which is even more dangerous. Wow, that almost killed me. Um, it will be slightly less powerful in the new league than what you're seeing right now. So it should be slightly easier. But uh, we're going to kill these and ooh, we want to find a red beast because that's what gives you the guaranteed unique item. All right, we just still need to find the red beast, but let's go back and get our extra Quicksilver. You can see Einar in town there. Okay, we're just going to vendor everything. And like you see, I do care a lot about picking up and vendoring things. Because we are starting to build up like our economy already. Um. Anyway, we're going to pick up the Quicksilver. Stay true to you. What? I don't think I need to be doing that right now. Um, we'll pick up some more damage over time multiplier. More damage over time multiplier. Let's go find the red beast so that we have a pretty good chance for a unique here. Not from actually killing it, but from interacting with the mechanic. I really hope my lag issues are resolved by League Launch. This shouldn't even be a new server since it was fine the first time. Very strange. I had this issue like years ago. Oh. I actually don't think this one has a guaranteed unique. I think it brings death though. I was having issues on a new character yesterday too. Yeah, it's not all of us. Generally, okay, we're actually going to ignore that because if I remember they gives me crumbs or jewelers. But quite a lot of the red beasts will give us a recipe. If I click H and click on the best here tab, you'll see here I have loads from before. Um, and if I remember right, that one is... Yeah, it's it gives you four jeweler orbs. We haven't covered those yet. Um, but a lot of them will give you unique items. And that can be very strong. Another thing I wanted to explain, we found a gem with quality on it. Every item can have quality on it pretty much. Um, and gems are no exception. And gems have a lot of information, and we'll start looking into that a little bit now that we've started exploring the game a bit. So, this is Shrapnel Ballista, right? And you see the tags at the top. These are really, really important. It will also tell you what support gems will literally work with this gem. So, Shrapnel Ballista is an attack, a projectile, a totem, it has physical, and bow as its tag. It's level 1, and it costs 5 mana. And then you're getting more and more inform inform information. The uh, green text is actually really important. It can tell you what it needs to be used. Some skills will have like needs a axe or a sword and people will be trying to use it with a mace, not understanding why it is grayed out and doesn't work. Um, and if we hold alt down, it'll tell you what quality effect does. So the quality here increases projectile speed of the skill. If I hover over my skills that I'm using, uh, like Wintertide brand, See that it gives me cold damage over time multiplier and creeping frost is given area of effect on quality. We haven't found the currency that gives quality yet for gems, but picking up a bunch of these and once you sell, let's say that I had three more with 10% quality, a uh, enough gems totaling 40 quality would sell for one gem cutter prism. Um, and then, um, like I said about tags, here you see spells, AoE, cold, duration, and brand. And we can see on FXC, this says support and duration, right? So since the duration tags match up, these link together. So what this means is also you can see the gems are glowing. You can see that FXC are glowing for both gems. So both of them are connecting. Um, and then uh, you can also see that the uh, letter is added. Gems, support gems will also increase the mana cost, and uh, you can have up to five support gems linked to one skill, mostly. There are some exceptions.
Um, honestly, there's no real reason for us to keep chance to poison on frost bomb. It is just increasing the mana cost, and it uh, it's not something we're using for damage anymore. We can also drop the onslaught support gem. It is not something we're using anymore. Actually, I guess we could keep it for cold snap. Anyway, we're going to keep moving. Um, oh, yeah. And then we have armor scraps and blacksmith whetstones as well. Um, they will give quality on weapons and armor, respectively. And an interesting thing to learn about uh, quality is that they will increase the chance of um, links and um, sockets. So the, the orb that the crab could give us um, would increase or change the amount of sockets on an item. And if you have 20 quality or more on an item, you, you get better sockets than if you have zero. This was a mini boss called an exile. They will drop a, well, generally a full item set of what we can wear. So you'll see that exiles, it dropped at least two rings. It dropped an amulet. It dropped a boot. It'll drop some form of weapon. It'll drop a belt. Um, and it generally drops like a full item set. And feel free to help each other in Twitch chat and stuff. I'm, I'm mostly ignoring Twitch chat today. Why not pick up the gloves? Oh, um, crippling laziness. There's no reason not to pick up the gloves. By now, you should have something in every slot. You should have something in every slot by now. I'm mostly waiting for rare items. No reason to wait, though. Hey, nice. Alchemy. Now we can explain what an alchemy does. So an orb of alchemy um, will turn a white item. It cannot be used on a rare item or an item that is blue. Like this. I'll give an error message. But it'll work on a white item and it'll turn it yellow and give it between 4 and 6 stats. This is not like a essence where it'll guarantee something and it's completely random. And an interesting thing about Path of Exile, there are a lot of um, tips and tricks for zones that are very hidden and you won't know them until you've played a lot. Like, for example, in this zone, um, once you see this part, this is actually an arrow showing you where to go next. So if the waypoint was here, or if the waypoint was here, it would actually say that this is where you're supposed to go next. There are a lot of things like that riddled throughout the game. Now we're going to go here and we are going to try to find there is a trial here. Just need Didn't know that. That's why we're teaching. 1.8k hours. There's even a little nub on the ground in ledge telling what direction Kaduku is. A lot of things like that riddled throughout the game. Can you make a video explaining all those layout tricks? I actually have one from like 2017 and it might be hard to find now though. Being stunned is very annoying. This build will eventually get stun immunity, which is very nice. Let's see. Now, picking these up when they're unidentified could be very scary, because this could be freezing me, and that could mean death. You have to be very careful. Here. See, we did get a topaz ring. I'm going to use that. It has life on it. That's great. Um, I'm pretty sure the trial is back here. There's another ghost. They're not too bad to kill. Like, they are still a unique mob, so they get a big bonus to, like, rarity and stuff. <sighs> we should pick that up, actually. Maybe we'll pick it up on the way back. So, a really, really good thing about traps to learn, and they will start getting more and more dangerous. Early on, it can be, like, very, very easy to basically end up trailing the trap. And that is a very, very good way to get killed. 
And whereas obviously like once you're very comfortable with them, you can just like move between them very easily and you'll never take damage or you can simply flame rush over them. But the number one thing that's actually really good when being comfortable with traps is that they simply don't have enough surface area to damage you and kill you. So if you're just speeding straight through traps, they pretty much do very little. So the worst thing you could do is panic and run backwards and back and forth. If you just run ahead and you aren't literally trailing the trap, you're probably going to be fine. We're just going to... Well, we can kill this. It's not... It's a little tanky, actually. We're just going to skip it. And then now we're going to move on. We'll pick up this Grand Manifest here, and we're going to come to a boss um, called Fidelitas. And Fidelitas is another boss's lover. Maligaro was uh, wanting to experiment on his lover and uh, shoved some gems in him and kind of fucked him up good. Nice try. Was it consensual gem shoving? I think so? I can't remember. I can't remember. We're gonna go down here and soon we're gonna gain our first mastery. Honestly, Path of Exile lore is very, very dark. There's a lot of torture, experimentation, um is it's very dark and we're definitely the bad guys we literally through the campaign will slaughter innocents that are running away screaming that thing it slaughtered everyone right so i'm gonna again show like first there's some trash mobs that you can clear out here and then i will start by not attacking the boss and just showing how to easily dodge it you guessed it run around in circles immortality you can see this standing up member of society. Um, we got fucked up a little bit. This is don't do don't do gems, kids. Don't do gems. Gems, not even once. You can't even aim properly. Anyway, so we're gonna start dotting him up now. This is all he does. He does nothing else. You can also notice how much slower he is now that we are actually using our skills on him. He has a 30% chill on him, and that is one of the strongest things defensively about this skill, is that we can do a very, very large chill on bosses. I need more pockets. You know, I wouldn't mind looking at the Quartz Scepter. I'm going to pick up the Baleful Gem and then go back to town. Do I mind starting over? I, I do mind, sorry. There. That's pretty good gloves. Chaos resist doesn't matter early. I'm also not going to explain it yet. And we're just going to vendor everything. Right. Okay. So we are going to pick up Cold Snap here. Um, but ideally, we want um, Skitter Boss as well. We're going to use that for a while. Oh, we can keep that. I know. And we can throw the Essence of Contempt on the belt and get some resists. This destroyed my old one. You can just vendor it. Right, let's see. Uh, we are now gonna... We'll quickly look while we're here, but we're gonna pick up Skitterbots. Now, the reason we're doing that is Skitterbots is extremely strong, and I do want to explain it a little bit because it's not apparent why it is strong. So, um, the aura will chill enemies near. Now, we're already chilling, so we're clearly not taking it for that. Um, but what Skitter Boss does is um, that it also shocks enemies near it. So eventually it'll basically be the same as enemies taking 15 or 16% more damage. And things like Herald of Thunder and Herald of Ice, while popular on a lot of characters, it doesn't really do that much for us right now. So um, yeah, the only thing that we can take right now is Skitter Boss. Well. We're also going to have Cold Snap. Right, now is where it gets a little bit button intensive. So, if you don't want to, uh, you can take Wintertide Brand, put that on R or something. I'm going to put Cold Snap on right click. That's where I like having it. Um, but even if you're, you've are you already seen that it does work pretty okay with two of them, but I would recommend using all of them. Uh, and later on, we're going to be auto-casting some skills, which is even nicer. 
Um, cold snap is basically I right click now and again and it'll put another dot down. So the rotation now for like bosses would be uh, right click, W, E, and R, or R and then E. And then you have a lot of chilling effects down on the ground and they're all stacking. Hey Scizorin, sorry for the stupid question, but isn't shocked an increased damage type source and not a more? So I don't want to try to like overwhelm. We will talk about the difference between more and increase later, but I don't want to try to overwhelm new players. But uh, there's no way to say this without overwhelming. When enemies take increased damage in a vacuum, it acts as a more multiplier and they're additive with themselves. I feel like that like more the, the head exploding emote. But uh, yeah, like if you have enemies take 20% increased damage, that is a more multiplier. Um, so, okay, since we already did mention more multipliers, it might as well mention it a little bit. In Path of Exile, there is a very large difference between increased damage and more damage. Increased, to, to make it super simple, more is better than increased. Um, more is multiplicative with itself, and increased is additive with itself. And then it gets really, really complicated because most players will quickly learn that, However, they won't know, for example, what I just mentioned, that if monsters take increased damage, that in itself in a vacuum is a more multiplier because it's multiplicative with the other more multipliers. But all you need to know, and I'm sorry that that got really complicated, is that more is better than increased. And, and that's generally why I try to leave some things out because it is very complicated. Anyway, we're in the Broken Bridge now. We're going to go kill Kirak. Oh, I forgot to boss. So that's on my second bar. We'll just hit Control w We could also remove it. It'll still be on. It's not like some games where it needs to be on your aura. You'll see in the top left that it is on. Ooh, I almost clicked stop stream. And uh, in the bottom right, you'll see that some of our mana is reserved. That means that we no longer have access to that part of the mana. And like someone in chat said, 2 times 2 times 2 is better than 2 plus 2 plus 2. So... Um, this is the first of our bandit choices. If you help Kraden, you'll be permanently granted attack speed, uh, ailment, avoidance, and movement speed. But we are going to kill all the bandits. Sometimes on a leak start, a lot of people like helping another bandit called Lyra because she gives elemental resistances. However, uh, that's also generally done on crit builds. Um, and we are going to kill all of them to gain two additional skill points. And you can also sort of pre-dot the boss before the fight even starts. Interesting little uh, thing to mention, bosses have, I think it's 6 or 8 seconds, where they take heavily reduced damage. So if you ever feel like the boss dies a lot faster later on, that is because Path of Exile got very, very tired of um, speedrunners using a skill called War Banner and instantly bursting every single boss in the uh, game or any boss in the game down as soon as it spawned. So that's why we now have a huge damage penalty. Uh, we can identify the leather belt. That is not good. And obviously, when you're new to the game, it'll take you a lot more than 0.3 seconds to identify if an item is good or not. And generally, what we are looking for is like the one we have, where we have here we have 17 fire resist, we have 8 cold resist. The other two are dead stats. We don't use them for anything. Um, stats aren't bad, but we don't need them. We don't look for them. And I might as well explain a little bit on this item here. 3 to 8 cold damage to attacks. We aren't using any attacks. This specifically mentions things like, you know, cleave or cyclone or anything that, um, you know, attacks using a weapon. We are using spells. So we're looking for things that are global. So this would work. However, we're also not scaling hit portions of our skills. We are doing something called damage over time or dots. Right. Um, so just to save a little time, the there is a thing in File Shrine that we need to go pick up. It's another one of those trials that I said everybody loves and is everyone's favorite content. We're actually going to skip that because I've already done that on the account just to save a little bit of time. It doesn't unlock anything uh, except for the uh, the lab trial that we need to do later. But that is another one of those trials that you need to do. It is in a zone called the Crypt, so you can run through that. Just trying to save a little bit of time for the video there. You normally do that at a league start. You could come back and do it later, right before sending two. There's not super scary monsters there. 
But uh, the more time I can save for the video, the better. There, and then a lot of monsters in this zone are very annoying. They like root you and stuff like that. Oh, actually, here's an interesting uh, little thing I can show. So when you're at the waypoint, and this is always the case, you'll see that there is like a brick road. And this actually leads you to one of the next areas where Oak resides. So you have to follow... Where did it even end? Here. You have to follow this road, and this will take you to the next area. Right. Boom. We now have Growth and Decay, which is a nice notable. It gives us 12 damage over time multiplier. We'll notice a big damage increase. You learn. That's good. Cold Snap is really good because if anything dies on the Cold Snap um, ground effect, it will give us Frenzy Charges. Frenzy Charges give us 4% more damage and they also give us increased attack and cast speed. So when we have 3, we're getting 12% more damage. This is huge, a very, very big increase. For example, uh, our support gem is 16% more damage. So it's basically like getting an extra support gem from those charges. Very, very big. Um, I think that I don't think I've ever found this and then everything explained before. This is a regal orb and I could use this on my blue boots and this will gain a stat. These are incredibly rare uh, to actually find. There is a recipe to find them later and they're very cheap on trading because they're very obtainable, but they are incredibly rare to naturally drop. This is Oak. Obviously some things we could get from killing or from helping him, but we are going to kill him. We are just a murderer chat. Another quality gem. We can pick up that. And now a nice thing you will notice. I will be doing this entire playthrough as if I was completely free to play. Um, Path of Exile isn't realistically free to play. It is more uh, better to consider Path of Exile buy to play with a really long good free trial. You can easily get like 50 to 100 hours for free with no problems. Um, but... Um, Actually, that's not even maybe true as a new player because you're more likely to hoard as a new player. Like I've I've done some like challenge runs where I've done like level 95 and stuff on four stash tabs. It is a miserable experience. There is no actual buying of power. Like I can't buy currency and I can't like upgrade my character for money or something like that. However, you can buy stash tab space. Which uh, once you've decided Path of Exile is a game for you, you can buy stash tab space like this. Um, they don't come with items in them. But, um, yeah. Generally, it's best to consider PoE a game that costs $40. Right. Under some more stuff. At the moment, I'm just playing with my inventory. We haven't used any storage space. We're going to continue from here. And then, it's important to note as well, Path of Exile generally runs a sale every two? For three weeks and usually very close to league launch. We just found a chance orb. A chance orb is basically an orb that um, will turn an item either into a blue, yellow, or if the item has a legendary, it has a chance to turn it into a legendary. That is determined a little bit by how rare the drop rate is. So for example, for a more common item like a, for example, Quill Rain, it could be as common as 1 in two or 300 chance orbs. Um, however, if you uh, use it on a more rare item, it can be as much as 1 in 13 or 16,000 chance orbs or even more. So they can get quite rare. Here we have another essence. We're definitely going to pick that up because this is a big upgrade. This is a big upgrade and we can show some early crafting. So... Now, we obviously, we have this Driftwood Wand here, and this will guarantee spell damage. Um, the 1 to 2 cold damage to spells is negligible, we don't care about that. But getting the additional spell damage is really, really nice. Alright, we're gonna go to the Western Forest. 
And now we're going to teach you a new little mechanic. We are now going to talk about masteries. So a lot of these things, like not the base ones, but you'll see that there's a circle in the middle called mastery on a lot of these. And you can um, put a point in that once you've gotten the final node. So here we have a choice of what the extra point is going to give us. So what we are going to do now, we're going to do the 10% damage over time multiplier if you've killed recently. That won't give us more damage for bosses, but it is pretty nice. So we'll have a lot more damage if we've killed anything recently. And recently refers to four seconds. Recently is always four seconds. Right. Um, so there's a couple of tricks in this zone. So... Um, First, the um, the same like road trick that we showed you earlier will also lead you to Alira here at some point. Wait, where is it? I didn't miss it, did I? There. Right. So uh, we'll have a little torch and a road similar to the oak area thing that'll lead you to Alira, the last bandit that we need to kill. And Alira is always on the same side as the waypoint, so we know that she's on this side. And that means that the other boss, the spider, is on the other side of the road. Just need a moment to catch my breath. And we just need to follow the road. Actually, a little hard to see. Leveling up more gems. And then, like you see here, critical strike multiplier regen and all resist honestly it is very good but we do want the skill points instead we do want the skill points nice those are rare items and a chaos orb a chaos orb will reforge a rare item into another rare item so it just randomizes all the stats and it'll have a minimum of four, a maximum of six stats. We're going to identify the boots because obviously boots are huge. We are now going to go down and we are going to pick up another skill quest point. And then we are going to go kill um, another boss. And then you might notice that Cold Snap has a pretty long cooldown on it. However, it can bypass that cooldown by using a Frenzy Charge. You can actually spam it. And it does have a little hit component. That's why we kept on slot on it for now, but probably not going to keep that. Once we kill this boss, we throw that in there and we can log out. We need to go back to Act 1 Town to hand in that skill point. What do you want? Let's see, we'll identify that. Just vendor everything for shards. We don't even need those. We're going to talk to Aramir, and he will give us the Apex. You need to have that in your inventory before you're able to finish this act. We talked to Bessel, and boom, we got three skill points. So we could take Leith Shade now. We're right next to it, but during the campaign, there's realistically nothing that is going to affect us. And Leith Shade is something that's really, really good when you're actually making your character immune to ailments at the endgame because it'll make zones that you stand in do less damage over time and no downside. Right. Um, we are now going to go take this. And we'll go for Snowforge next. We're going to go back here and... Let's see, we will now go kill a little spider. Everybody's favorite spider. So we are going to have a full guide for this. Obviously, people that are watching this is literally, you know, watching a crazy long guide for this. But um, we are going to have a league starter guide for this. And it's potentially one of the things I'm league starting myself. I'm trying to decide, am I going cold dot? Am I going Explosive Arrow or am I going Toxic Rain? I really, really do want something for the League that's strong against the Harbinger mechanic because that's going to be very nice to farm this League. So I don't want something where I have to reapply the damage. I want something where the damage stays on the ground. That's going to be very important for my choice. Uh, 
And yeah, while, while Caustic Arrow and you steal the thud, it could be very good. No melee start for me, myself? No, I'll make a melee starter most likely, but me, myself, will not be starting melee probably ever. Spells have such a huge advantage um, by the fact that they gain so much of their power from levels, and even getting a level 21 gem is not that hard for me. So... I always do melee as like a second or third character if I do it. Ow. I do a lot of damage. No point in looking back now. There's just death and a lot of it. Alright, let's see. Uh, I will definitely not make a Hank's Pass starter. Right, so now we're gonna kill Weaver. Weaver is a little annoying. It's actually harder for me to do the whole like don't get hit thing because she has a lot of adds. But she has a pretty scary ball attack. I don't know if she'll do it when she's full HP. But a uh, very, very scary ball attack that can actually hurt. There. That like web ball. That hurts a lot. Other than that, just run around in circles. She has a fast attack, so she will hit you anyway. But at least the chill helps quite a lot. And you have to deal with adds for a while. As you can see, this is exceedingly easy with a cold dot because we're just putting loads of damage over time on the ground. And more circle moving. Ah. All right. We can portal back for the first time. Why not? What? All right, let's see. Logging out to save portal scrolls is a very good tactic, Turn, though. If you must. There, and now we start getting um, support gems. So the only one that we're going to care about um, is going to be Elemental Focus. Now, you don't want this on all your cold skills because you do want um, something that can actually chill. But um, keeping it on one of them isn't a bad idea. Although, I wish I had another three blue. I, I saw one wand earlier that I thought about picking up, but I didn't. Well, we'll keep it in our inventory for now. It'll be easier to use when I have a four link. It'll be easier to use when I have a four link. I do want controlled destruction as well. But yeah, as you can see, socket pressure is pretty bad right now for me. I don't have that many like good groups of sockets. Um, I should start caring a little bit about more what I pick up. And early on, that's generally all you care about, more than rare and blue items. I don't even have particularly good uh, resist right now, because we do have a lot of transmutes. Normally, as a normal player, what I would do right now that I already have a hideout, I would go to my hideout and start crafting. However, we are going to wait with that until we would unlock it naturally, which is a northern forest. Northern forest. But you only have to play like that the first time. Once you've unlocked it once, you have it forever. And this is... It used to be my least favorite zone for a very, very long time. It has an incredible amount of dead ends. And it's a very, it's probably the largest zone early. And you'll often hear people in chat say, I am full clearing wild ruins. Smile. Um, you do sort of get a feel for it eventually, but uh, it is very large. We're running straight to it here. But um, just to get to this ball area, uh, I think we've only explored like 20%. So you can see that we like run pretty much straight to it, but um, there there are a few like layouts. Like some of them are shaped like a horseshoe, some of them are shaped like an S. There's one like a Z. There's I don't think there's more than twenty layouts for this. Um, and some layouts will be really really skewed by something we haven't seen yet, which is called a Val side area, which will ruin a layout. And every speedrunner hates them because it ruins all of our runs. This shadow is starting to. That actually makes level. them weird. But yeah, we click that and then we move through to the next zone, pick up the lightning shrine. I'm sad I haven't had a movement shrine yet. 
just need a moment to catch my breath. Mm -mm -mm. And a good thing is that I'm not having like any um I don't have any leveling gear at all. So if you have any leveling gear, this will be an even even better experience. Anything like a gold rim, wanderlust, everything like that. I like doing it like completely bare bone. Now, normally you never go into this zone except for the first time that you need to do it. And in this zone is where you're going to find your hideout. And after that, I will actually start using the crafting bench. And grab that essence. Come here. Ow. Why are you so mean? Nice. I'm going to pick up all those items. Got an essence and a rare. And yeah, now we just have to find... It's in here somewhere. It is in here somewhere. There it is. So, once you find this, you will find your first hideout. It'll basically ask you to full clear. Mm, I think I will take that. It's a good example. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, and then you need to kill these. And then whenever you full clear this, you might have to run around a little bit because it could be the monkey stuck in the ceiling. But at some point, uh, Helena will be like, wow, you full cleared it. You're amazing. Um, and then she would stand here or teleport to you. I can't remember. But then uh, she'll be like, oh, you can now create your first hideout. And then you will do that and we'll show that at the end of the next zone. Right, let's see. We are now able to get another mastery as well. Um, so, there are loads of good things here. Like, most likely what we're going to keep is 40% effect of non-damaging elements. But, because we're so early in the game right now, picking up this is a huge amount of resist and will make us take way less damage. So, that's what I would recommend early and we can respect that later. You're a little bit at the risk of forgetting it, but um, you can uh, respect that. Valorb. Uh, don't use that. It, it can ruin your items. Okay, I guess I can explain it a little bit. Okay, Valorbs are pretty rare. You usually don't find them this early. And it has several uses. You can be used on items and uh, it will change the implicit of an item. So what is an implicit? So as you can see, this Sapphire Ring and the Topaz Ring that has the implicit of Cold and Lightning Resist. Right? So this is unaffected by us rolling the item. However, if I use the Vile Orb, it has a chance to change the Implicit from Lightning Resist to something else. It can also reroll all the stats on the item, so this could ruin your item. And you cannot further modify a Vile item. However, there are also really cool things that can happen with gems. If I use it on um, Cold Snap, it can turn into a Vile Cold Snap, which is a spe special gem that requires souls. Um, it can go down a level, it can go up a level, it can lose 10 quality, or it can gain 10 quality. And that is the things that can happen. It is around a 1 in 6 or 1 in 8 chance to become a Vile Cold Snap. And I gave up a level, and now I lost my gem. Okay, we no longer have a Cold Snap. We need to level 3 more levels, and that was really unfortunate right before a boss. You'd figure, since I have streamer RNG, it would give me Vile Cold Snap. Where is my streamer RNG? Told you it wasn't real. Generally, what, what just happened is what you want when the gem is max leveled, because then it can bypass the normal limit of level 20. But yeah, generally, don't use those. Like I said, bad things can happen. And now bad things happen. Well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of my actions. We are able to use it again at 24. A little bit annoying though. I guess I'll put Wintertide Brown back on right click. Can you get a gem Val and 21 in a single Val? No, only from the specialized temple. 
Right, now we are going to go grab some life. Yeah, we won't take the pressure now. Grab some more life. Generally, a good rule of thumb, especially for a new player, is 300 life per act. You can do more or less as you please. I guess it's down here. No, Kira Ascendant. That recipe would not be useful. Not really. Oh, it is up there. Stupid first layout. More like 150 per act. I'm a softcore player. That's fair. But a lot of people don't like dying on softcore and, and still will build a lot of defense. Take a quick break after Val. And I probably should start speeding up a little bit soon. It's mostly the start takes a little bit long because there's so much to explain. Rest per act. So once we've killed Val, we're going to show how to get resist kept uh, this early. You, you can already get resist kept in act two. I will teach... And you might have seen like extra gems that I aren't picking up is dropping. That's not worth picking up. I do remember when I was a new player and I had three different gem tabs. I had a red gem tab, a blue gem tab, a green gem tab. This later evolved to a red active gem tab, a green active gem tab, a blue active gem tab, and a red support gem tab, etc. Just like hoarding six tabs of support gems that I would never use. So there's only like one of them that's sold. Chain. So don't do that. Learn from our mistakes, chat. Quality gems are worth keeping. Spell Echo has never been expensive because once it was added, it was guaranteed. The only reason Chain was expensive was because... It was drop only. I'm sure Spalaka was always guaranteed since it was added. Really? Maybe I'm misremembering. You could only get it once? Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. But it was guaranteed. It's a long time ago. Right, now we're gonna kill Val. Um, while waiting for Val to spawn, you can also go down here and click a crafting recipe. I don't have access to these on my account, because I've already clicked them, but, um, they will unlock them for your craft. Now, while Val is spawning, this is a really, really good time to, like, call anyone in your life that you haven't talked to in a while, catch up with them, watch Lord of the Rings, write an autobiography, and there are so many things you can get down and do before Val spawns. And the recipe that we find here is a little lightning damage to spells, I think, or spell damage. It's not movement speed. Right, so he summons adds and then he goes under. Very important to be moving around a lot with him. That thing will one-shot you. Um, that will hurt quite a lot if the rocks stack on you. Just run around. Um, and then we also have a laser. The laser will do very little damage the first time it hits you, and it can kill you on the second time. There. Oh god. It'll hit you three times. I don't even think that does... It does a little bit of cold damage. Easy peasy. Now, you could alternatively uh, watch Lord of the Rings while waiting for this to open. Uh, but once you are done looting... There's so many rare items. I actually want to keep that. Uh, once you're done looting, you can just go back to town. And the same as the instance I showed earlier, once you've killed the boss, it is already unlocked without you needing to click anything. It's still too long, Vash. Not short enough. 
crazy rare. Um, we can keep. Well, we don't. Hmm. All right, we don't really want any of these. We do want the white gloves. Ideally, we want a new helmet with better links. What we're gonna look for? No. Right, we're gonna keep the gloves though. And I'm going to explain why in a sec. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break and we are going to cover the hideout. Which you can access by writing slash hideout. You can have a macro for does it as well. I'll be right back.
Come back. Also, another thing I should mention as well, another build that I have and everything explained for is an explosive arrow one as well, which is really, really good. Would I recommend watching that too. Hello, Vash. Um, so the crafting bench is incredibly powerful. And the most bestest thing that I could possibly teach you is that the crafting bench works on white items. Very, very many veteran players actually believe that, uh, well, not really veteran players, but anyway, people that play PoE very commonly believe that an item has to be blue or uh, yellow before you can craft on it, but it can actually be entirely white. So you can just put an item in the crafting bench, scroll down to resists and boom, it becomes blue with resists on it. And because we're doing that, we're going to hold down alt and search for if there's open suffix. And then we can just craft on a few items. And then once we've done that, as we have a bunch of transmutes, you can see that we're almost resist capped already. How do I get this hideout? That's the one we showed you how to unlock. Oh, this specific hideout. Um, Greetings. this is from Killing the Shaper. But for now, you will only have the one you get in Dread Thicket. That's just cosmetic, though. Um, all right. And then we'll sell my old one. My old one was slightly better, but I want the, uh, the sockets of the one I just picked up. So now I'm going to move... Um, I do think I want three blue, really. I, don't, I mean, green's not the end of the world. Let's see if we can get three blue. Yay! We got it. All right. Now I can do elemental focus. Where's my, um, oh yeah, I don't have cold snap anymore. Um, there. Now we can have creeping frost with FEC and Ellie focus. That'll be fine for now. Actually, we can go by controlled destruction. Because that is quite nice. We can buy two of that. We have so many alterations now. Might as well spend some. We buy two controlled destructions. Goodbye. We don't crit, so that does nothing bad for us. There, we can move FXC to the winter tide around. So now what our gem setup looks like, we have elemental focus and control destruction with creeping frost. Both of these are damage support gems. Uh, elemental focus means that we can't do uh, any chilling ailments, but we have other skills that can do that. So we can chill with winter tide and well, we can, uh, there we'll do this. We can chill with, um, Cold snap once we get one level. One level. So, um, I said earlier that you don't need to talk to any Path of Exile quest givers to get a quest. One exception to that is Clarissa. So we're coming up on Clarissa here now, and you actually need to free her. And that is pretty important. So here you need to actually kill the person guarding her and you need to free her. Just need a moment to catch so she breath. takes a few seconds to stand up. And uh, yeah, very often people will be like, oh, I didn't talk to Clarissa. I don't... There. See. Honestly, wouldn't mind another three blue. Although, no, we're going to throw that back out. The reason for that is now in this act, we are able to find a four socket. Um, so now we're going to start thinking more about getting a four socket, and I don't really care about getting a new chest right now. So, Scissorin, why can we get a four socket in this act and not the last one? So, sockets on gear is related to item level. If I hold alt, you'll see that this is item level 5, this is item level 21, and um, um, it is item level 25 to get a four socket. So that means that we can now start getting uh, four socket items. And then I think it's item level 35 for five sockets and item level 50 for um, five uh, for six sockets. There is no item level requirement for linking. There is simply an item level requirement for socketing. Very, very important. So soon we are able to get four sockets. Four linked. All right, let's see.
Here we have another one of those pesky trials that we need to do. Then we also meet Piety once again. Technically, this would be the third time meeting Piety. We've kind of skipped some of the places meeting her because we didn't run the normal routes that uh, a completely new player would run. Not that you should run those. Avoid some lore. So we need to do this trial. The only trial we've skipped so far is the Crypt Trial, which, you know, it is pretty much, they're all the same. They're all like small, like little levers and things you have to avoid and pull. And then now we're going to go kill Piety over here. She's usually very close to the trial, but not always. My shadow continues to nip at my heels. Bag it and tag it, boys and girls. There is our first four link. We are going to pick that up, and that is a wand. Maybe that'll be good. And then we're gonna kill Heidi. So I do one more crumbs now. Getting four blue on that would be quite hard, but getting three blue and one green would not be hard. And we do have green support gems we can use. Go back to town. And then we find a wand. We're gonna identify that. That is very nice. So this obviously very, very replaces um, this one because it doesn't do anything. This is the biggest damage stat for our build, Cold Damage Over Time Multiplier. So our build is affected by spell damage and it is affected by cold damage or elemental damage. Cold Damage Over Time Multiplier is slightly better than the others. We will sell some armor scraps. Uh, no, we're not gonna. They, they are good stats on them, but we care more about socket pressure this early. We're not gonna use that mana flask. Instant is very annoying for mana flasks. Oh, wait. I thought he gave us a quest forward at this point. Anyway, we are now given a curse. General Gravisius demands absolute obedience from his blackguards, meaning he's surrounded. Okay, we don't have room for said curse. I think I'm going to remove Frost Bomb for now. No, you know, mm. let's see if I can get a new helmet. Hello. That would be the nicest. Any loads of blue helmets. This would be nice if it were linked, but I do not want to link it myself. You don't have movement speed. You know, a helmet that can get movement speed. Stay out of the shadows. We don't have chromes. All right. Well, I will stop using Wintertide Brand, to be honest. Don't even want it. We're going to stop using it soon anyway. 28. So now I'll just use Cold Snap, Creeping Frost, and Frost Bomb. Alright. Now we're going to go find a little thing on the map. And that will show us where the entrance is. Very scary to click strong boxes. Definitely can get you killed. Ideally, you can identify them before clicking them, but at least don't willy-nilly click them when you're playing hardcore. Unless you know what you're doing. Trust me, I am professional. Here's the zero writing. We're going to unlock that with the key we got from talking to Clarissa. Is this not using the stash? Nope. I generally, on everything I explain, just play with the four default stashes, and you don't really use them while leveling. You don't really use them while leveling. You have three stashes in this area that you need to click. One of them is before the waypoint and two of them are after. Wow, finding so many ones. Okay, so this one does have cold damage, but it doesn't have a good implicit and the rest of the ones kind of whatever. Um, and then this one has cold damage, but not enough anything else. Cold damage over time multiplier plus one level of gems would be the main things that we're looking for. Now, most people would now run up to that, but since I do know the layout, I do actually know that I have to run over here first because the second bust is there and that is actually the third bust. Um, actually, this also used to be one of my least favorite zones. And I ran it a stupid amount just to learn it. And now we're here. Yeah, 
There's another hideout. If you don't like your first one, you could pick this up. But uh, there's no need. It is literally just cosmetic. You can grab those whenever you want. There's some rare ones, actually. Honestly, that layout, I can't even explain it. There's quite a lot of layouts that I just know. Like, when it looks like this, this is how it is. There's not always like a, oh, this nub here is twisted to the left. I think I remember this zone having a massive amount of chaos damage many years ago. It was. It had a chaos invasion monster called Spine Snap that they decided to put in the sewers. So it used to be super deadly, and the sewers also used to be three separate zones. You're not mistaken. They've just removed him. There also used to be, if you are a returning player that used to play PoE, like for example, Perpetus has been removed from City of Siren. I can't remember exactly where they put him now, like far into the slums or something. But he used to kill everybody, so they removed him. They would lock you in place and just kill you. Very brutal. We are getting very, very close to the main skill of the build, Vortex. And that is going to feel like a fever dream. It is extremely powerful. Feel very, very good. Another chance there. We'll pick that up. This is going to be cold dot. Did Sis make a plus one cold recipe for his wand or no? No. That doesn't exist this early. That doesn't exist this early anymore. They remove that. It's a more expensive recipe that you won't have access to on a new character now. We're doing a playthrough as if we were a new character. Just need a right, to now we've done the trial. Mind. Just log out, log back in. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Definitely nope. And out of wisdoms again. We can also sell whetstones for wisdoms. They sell for more than armor scraps. We will keep that. We do want to chrome it to three blue, one green. Or four blue. Um, let's see. I would love to get a really blue helmet. Not really blue enough. Need more blues. Right, we have some skill points we can assign. So we'll grab those. So now we're up to written in blood. We'll go up here. What we really need right now. Oh, I should vendor a few more things. There. Just don't have room for frostbite. That's fine. I don't even want frostbite. Going back to the marketplace. I thought the plus one recipe was removed completely. No. It's... I have a, like I can't really include it as like a beginner tip in this guide. Because you need, for example, uh, enough cold gems with 40% total quality. And that'll give you plus one cold. But you're not going to have that as a new player. Not going to have it when you're new. Well done. Oof. There. Yeah, very excited for the new league. I just wonder how many people are going to end up watching these. And like for how long people end up watching these. If for some reason you're watching this in like July next year, there's probably a new video by now. I'm always worried that people end up watching outdated videos. Like, these are only good for, like... I mean, some of them are good for six to nine months. But generally, they're, like, good for three months. Very safely good for three months. I've never watched two outdated videos in Path of Exile. 
That was crazy. So I remember when I first started this video format. Oh, yeah, go inside. Um, whenever I first started this video format, so many people were making fun of me and said it was terrible. Because who wants to watch eight hours? But then they started getting 200,000 views and people started really enjoying them. And then people weren't making fun of them as much anymore. So that's nice. I'm glad people like them. Now we're in the battlefront. We're going to pick up one quest item here as well as the waypoint. And it is very near the waypoint. Wait, I don't need these. I don't know why I picked those up. Nice shining. That looked weird. Did, am I having a stroke? <sighs> Let's see. Anyway, we have uh, the waypoint. We're going to go to the next zone. Now, normally, especially as a new player, you will be super overleveled here. So generally, a rule of thumb, if you are 23 or higher, you go to the docks first. But if you're under leveled, you go to if you're 22 or below, you go to the right to the other zone. That is slightly lower. It'll take slightly longer time, but it'll let you catch up a little bit on XP. And that's actually the number one thing later on. If you do ever try to like speed up your leveling process, it becomes very easy to go super fast. Uh, but what gets really, really hard and ends up being the struggle for a lot of people is going really fast while staying an okay level. Because obviously at some point you will start getting super under leveled and not getting XP and uh, just dying repeatedly. That was like the hardest thing to learn while trying to learn speed running. Because I used to take like 8 to 10 hours doing the X, even though when I'd played quite a lot. And I was like, I don't want to spend 8 to 10 hours on the campaign. I want to do it fast. So I spent like a lot of time practicing and then got it down to pretty regular, like 2 to 4 hours. It's all good, Mystical. I appreciate it. There we have the thematic soul fight. We're going to grab that. Now we're actually going to run around the zone a little bit more because it's actually very nice to grab the waypoint in this zone. This is the best farming zone in this act. So if you ever feel like you're a little weak, you want a little bit more power, over level a little bit more, this is the zone to do so. Let me um, grab that rare item because why not? Yeah, is that here? Yourself. See. And we'll use that chrome in the chest. Two blue. Not exactly what we wanted. Die. You get him, boy. Any full blue helmet. There are some nice boots there. Plus our only transmute. I don't really want to pay that. Stay out of the shadows. They bite. Okay, we're gonna go grab towards Season of Ice. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, it's the Energy Shield Mastery. It doesn't really have anything super good. And we are now gonna go to the Solaris Temple. What buffs are we gonna use later? Um, Grace. Both Grace and Determination are very good. This build's definitely going to focus. Well, I mean, I think we'll be using both, but Grace is going to be very, very huge for this because of Ghost Shrouds. Not a speck of dust or brick out of place. Someone's got too much time on their hands. There, and then we're going to run through this zone, and we are very close to unlocking Vortex. That's going to speed us up a lot, too. Is gonna speed us up a lot. Let's see, have we found anything else that needs? Oh, here's a gem box. I can give. Um, so this one will only give support gems. I mean, we can pick up an extra control destruction. The other ones don't matter. Oh, not a single unique item yet. Interesting. Quite often you would have found like one by now. Although they did like rework the rarity a little bit on unique items and a lot of the leveling uniques are pretty insane now. 
pretty insane. Things like Thousand Ribbons are actually like actually crazy leveling items. Yeah, we'll do this at least until Act 9. That's the earliest I'll stop. If we have time, we'll go all the way to Act 10, but I don't want to do, like, the videos too crazy long. They're a pain to upload to YouTube, and it ends up being, like, buggy. They're too long. What are you league starting? So this is one of my potential league starters, a trickster cold dot. Super tanky. Uh, it would be this or Toxic Rain or Explosive Arrow Champion. Right. Um, so we are most likely going to have either Dex or Strength issues with this build. So I'm going to pick up a Jade Amulet. Will come again. They I like you. Believe me. Not a cockroach. Stats can be a bit of a pain for a build, but do remember that you have access to things like that. Right, we're going to go to the sewers. And we're on our way. Very, very close to Vortex. What a super tanky, mean in PoE terms. They are focusing on like being able to stay in boss fights and not just focus on damage. Oh yes, third league with Explosive Arrow. I didn't play Explosive Arrow last league. Like Alright, let's see. There, even more damage. I wish I had more blue sockets. Socket pressure is very annoying. And for those that are curious, that is something that goes away in PoE 2, where sockets will work very differently. Full rework. They won't be on the items, they'll be on the gems themselves. Right, this boss um, has a lot of annoying abilities. When he does the Meteor Rain, just kite him out of it because, like you see, it doesn't like last forever. Other than that, it doesn't really have anything dangerous except his Molten Shell. Boom. Killed you back in Aria if I'd have been showered in gold. Where's the justice, eh? Alright, alright. Now we're gonna make our way towards Lunaris Temple where we're gonna find Piety again for hopefully the final time. But it isn't. Spoiler alert. You can see already Cold Snap on its own is doing really, really nice damage. Really, really nice damage. More crumbs. Right, here is the little mini boss that you can skip just by running over here. Uh, it's actually pretty scary. It's basically like Brutus, but he actually does a lot of damage and is a little faster. A lot of explosions. No loot. Just XP. We are at level 28. That means that we are high enough level for a Vortex. We just need to get it. Ideally, we really do want a helmet as well. Right. Do I actually get Vortex as a quest reward? I don't. Man, Occultist or Witch is so much like easier. You get everything. You don't even have to pay for it. Um, alright. Then we don't need any of those. Let's go buy one. I have to pay for it. Hello. Oh. Let's see. Just do a quick check. Vortex. Boom. Be careful. We have now bought a Vortex gem. What's going on? Any helmets? I'm gonna go level up real quick and then check the vendor reset and see if there's a nice helmet I can get. So we're just gonna do a quick level. A quick level. 
The frenzy charges are coming from Cold Snap. Nice shield wouldn't be bad too, and then we could use shield charge whenever we feel like it. There, we have leveled. Let's go back to town and check what the vendor race that brought us. Alright, let's see. Oops. You looking sharp? Am I? Man. Really? Do I have a jeweler? I do have one jeweler. Okay, I can use one transmute. And then we can pray. Okay, three. That'll work. That'll work. Then I can chrome this. Okay, right. Things are happening. Things are happening. Oh, and I'm getting rid of Wintertide. Where do I have... Oh, I don't have that anywhere. Okay. Um, We are going to need to... I guess that's the highest item level, so we'll actually use... Didn't we have a Greed Essence? We do. That would have been great if I was a Minion Summoner. Actually, quite a rare thing to happen. Um, But yeah, we will keep that. And we'll craft on it in a sec. We're gonna need res, I think, on something. Hello. Scepter and Leaf Sun would be so good. No, this is a series for new players. This is not a speedrunning series. There. Let's see. I need to do library to buy hypothermia. Right? Yeah, this I do. You. I do. Right, anyway. We have controlled. We have vortex. Uh, I wouldn't mind FX on this. We'll go to Act 1. Oh, I only have one transmute. Is Wintertide Ram bad? You just don't need it anymore. You have too many active skills. Goodbye. You just use it early. Now we are... Before we kill Piety, we might as well go get another support gem for our... Um, thingy. For our Vortex. Now, I'm going to show you the best thing about this build. So, previously, we had move only on mouse button 1. Now, we're going to put vortex on mouse button 1. Now, whenever you have an instant skill on mouse button 1... Wait, where are my skitterbots gone? There. Uh, whenever you have an instant skill on mouse button 1, it is auto-casting. Now, this can, like, sometimes prove to give you mana issues, but most of the time, it'll probably be okay. And as you can see now... This is basically auto killing all the monsters around me. Just need a moment to catch my breath. There. Why did you choose that helmet over all the others? Oh, just because it was a uh, intelligence helmet. So when I added a um, socket with a jeweler on it, I had a bigger chance to get a blue socket. Or if I used chrome. Um, I would have a bigger chance for blue sockets. Like I explained earlier, they are tied to the um, stat requirement. We can upgrade the life loss there. We have a level 30. Fast Blower Bubble is the thing that gives quality for flasks. We usually save those until we're around map level, which is the end game. How does the auto casting happen? So that's if you put it on mass button one. Very nice. I'm gonna go find the waypoint here before we go into this zone. The problem is if you put something that isn't instant on mouse button one, this is what happens. Say hello, I can't move. But with a Vortex, it's an instant skill. How are the Skitterbots summoning without it being linked? So, Skitterbots don't need to be linked to anything for any reason. Um, they're just Skitterbots. It's an aura. Like, you don't need to link an aura to anything to use the aura. You just need to have the aura on. It's an active gem. And then you activate it. And then it reserves your mana. And then they run around shocking and chilling things. No, we don't have Infernal Legion on it. Nor do we plan to. 
Augmentation, I think I haven't mentioned as well, is if a blue item only has one stat, it'll fill in the other stat. And you can't have two prefixes on a blue item, only one prefix, one suffix. And a rare item can have three prefix, three suffix. The hard part about making... There are two really hard things about making beginner content for PoE. A, you don't know what they don't know. And... It's so easy to, like, take things for granted. And, um... Yeah, just remembering. Remembering what to mention. It's just so in-depth. And you don't want to overwhelm people too much by explaining everything. And not everything is worth explaining. Very, very hard thing. Just need a moment to catch my this zone, I hate. I actually dislike this zone. Ugh! Oh. I'm frozen. We have no way to disable ailments on us yet. Here is the next area, and once we go kill the library, we are able to get hypothermia. Nice presume. I have to start switching my sleeping pattern over because the leak starts at 7 or 8 p.m. my time and I want to wake up like an hour before that. And we'll do like 20 to 30 hours of lunch. In this zone, we just want to run around, clearing most of it, and picking up the golden pages. Okay, so this is a divination card. You will find some, and very, very unlikely, to complete the sets during, um, during the campaign. But this is basically a shard. So, they will give a reward when you fill up the set by handing them in to, um... A div card hand in. There's one in Act 4, and there's one in your hideout. Um. Huh. So, for example, if I get two more of the Scholar cards, I can hand that in for 40 Scrolls of Wisdoms. And there's some that are, like, really, really good with endgame rewards. So, they can be very, very strong. Pick up that. Starting to have some mana issues. Are they bad mana files? Oh, wait. There. So, you're not even that bad. And a fun fact, every Path of Exile Divination card is designed by a supporter, so somebody that paid approximately $600 to design one. Not a single one is designed by GGD as a company. Like, for example, the community manager got given one as a gift by somebody that bought one for her, um, but they don't actually design a single Divination card themselves. Every single one is designed by somebody that paid for it. Pretty interesting. Oh, there it is. Another fun fact, one of the most popular divination cards that are common, Humility, the person who made it, is banned. We don't know why. We can only suspect. Nothing good. These are jewels. Um, they can have up to four stats on them, and if you have a jewel slot on your skill tree, you can put it in there. Yes. You can put it in there. There, we'll just try that. Whoops, you, you have nothing for me yet. Elsewhere. Banned from what? The game. Path of Exile. Just please, do not be Don't you have one? I have three. Two. Well, about to be three. Turn four. Um, let's pick up Hypothermia. I made the divination card the undisputed, and then I made another one called Sea of Blue with chat, and then I have one more that I can make, and I gave away one div card to somebody else this league that might be revealed this league. Uh, there's nothing we want here actually. Fortune thing, it's so good. Right, 
Once we're level 31, we can use that. Yeah, Sea of Blue is the other one. Gives alterations. I wanted it to give 20, but somebody had already taken that. Right. Um. Now, normally I do Curses and Amenities in Chilling Area. Yeah, I'd probably still do that. Curses is going to be good. Um, Speaking of Curses, I don't have one yet. I really want one. So right now, this heal point does nothing, but we are ideally using Frostbite soon. Ooh. Don't want to get rid of Arcane Search. We'll just, we'll get a Jeweler and a Chrome or a new boot. We can use the Frostbite. I was once off my tits for three days after taking bad leaf drops. <laughs> Felt just like this place. When you start using shield charge, honestly, for new players, I usually I don't start using them in and everything explained at all. Flame dash is more than enough. Are there rules and restrictions made to making a div card? Um, yeah, you don't really have any choice at all. You just get a drop down basically, and you're like, what from this list do you want to put in the game? Like, it's not like you can be like like create an item or a gem or anything. You don't get to choose where it drops. You don't get to choose its rarity. That's still kind of neat. Right. Once we get to the last staircase here, there's a little trick to know if you're going in the right direction. And somebody asked in chat, am I testing league starters? So what I'm doing right now is I'm doing a series called Everything Explained. Basically for new players where I try to explain every single thing I do. Or most things at least. Um, so two cards wrong way, one card correct way. And where to go. So nice having the vortex on the left click. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Ooh. And I haven't fully decided if I'm least starting this yet, but it's very high up on the list. I'll definitely make a least starter guide for one. Another Chrome, we'll pick that up, even though we have a pretty good chest already. It's been a grand experiment, now, the support gem you just saw me grab as well, Hypothermia, is actually really cool. Because it can actually be used to deal damage with any skill, um, as long as you're using... Ooh! Ah! One sec. As long as you're using um, Skitter Boss, because then everything is chilled. So basically, it's supposed to be for cold skills. But it just needs to be chilled and then it'll work for everything. So Piety, um, this final time that we're killing her, um, well, like, she's be pretty weak whenever she has no portal activated, but she'll teleport into the blue or red portals and get like a big power up. At this point, our build is so strong that it shouldn't be much of an issue. Ow. Now see, we are either resist capped or close to resist cap. So we are pretty strong. We are pretty strong. I try not to take my work personally, but you, Piety, were a satisfying exception. There, so, what? like, items like that we were never going to use, no matter how good they are. The only item that we were looking at for stats was the one, and obviously this doesn't have any stats that Watch yourself. I would use. Let's see, I don't have a jeweler. However, the vendor does sell jewelers for alterations. You generally shouldn't use this, but since I really want one blue socket, um, getting two or three sockets and then using a chrome would give me a lot bigger chance of getting that because now I get a big damage boost by having frostbite. 
I typically like having my curse on either middle mouse button or T. And that is quite nice. And then, oh yeah, we should go do the trial in this zone as well. We are pretty close to ascending, which is when we do our specialization class. Oh, also, for those listening on Twitch, I will not be live tomorrow at all, I think. It is my uh, son's first birthday. So we're going to do like a birthday party day. I'll tweet some pictures. He's one. That's pretty exciting. Name is already one year, yeah. Crazy. Don't blink, he'll be 18. Well... So personally, I'm really looking forward till he's like, I don't know, he needs maybe another six months or something, but maybe at least two or three years old so he can start farming for me in the games I play. Because right now, honestly, he is just wasting space, like food is so expensive, diapers, everything, and he's not even farming for me. So really, what was the point? Very disappointed. Gonna give him like another year before I kick him out, but he really needs to start pulling his weight. And then, you know, a lot of parents do chores, and I was thinking, instead of chores, we'll do like, well, you didn't farm, farm five divine herbs today, so you don't get food. Try again tomorrow. And it can, like, carry over, we'll gamify it. We're talking about steel mage, right? <laughs> Yes, Cerny. Your kid is doing wow dailies. Nice. This goes on YouTube, you know? Watch out what you say. Someone might take you seriously and get you banned. I doubt that. I think it was pretty easy to tell. I am looking forward to Valkosti Kara. I'm very excited to see what it does. Uh, a good thing to mention, the uh, waypoint that I picked up is always before you go to Upper Perceptor of God. So if you are in Upper Perceptor of God and you don't have the waypoint, you've gone too far. Okay, maybe we get a cool red beast here. They're always worth checking. Alright, let's see. What do I want now? We could go here and grab extra curses, but I'm like unlikely to use that anyway. I could reserve the curse as an aura, but I'd rather have grace. Actually, I should have bought that already. Um, I do have some energy shields. We can go down here and grab grace, or sorry, uh, ghost dance. And then after dumbness, see if I remember to buy grace, which is our first proper aura. I cannot remember what this gives. I thought it was staff. But I don't know if there is this unique staff this early. Aren't you staff? You are staff. Is there really a unique staff this early? Oh, there's that trap staff. Yeah, you're right. Oops. Nice items. Let's pick that up. Any good boots? No. No good boots. Do, 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 do. Alright. We are almost at the boss. And... 
probably the first boss that can be a little challenging. So, this boss will bombard you with loads of ads at the start. Sometimes... Honestly, this has never happened before during everything explained, but yeah, sometimes there can be a ghost in the boss area. If that happens, you can just reset the zone if it's too scary for you. It doesn't happen very often. Um, the ads... Honestly, just try to face them one at a time if you can, and they're pretty doable. And most bosses and everything is so easy on this build because we are chilling everything. So there's so much slower than normal. Another good tip, if you are a new player and you still want to try playing on a hardcore, then Decoy Totem is an even good friend. Better? Gooder? Even gooder friend. There. And also, we have so much damage as you can see now. Like, this build does so much damage early. Ooh. That is probably the most likely thing to um, kill you. He will sometimes say, uh, touch of God. And sometimes he won't say it because, well, it's bugged. Um, and then slam the ground. Plus one lightning. Where is the plus one cold chat? Ooh. 20% movement speed with... Um, with the cold rest, that's great. Now we're cold rest capped, almost fire, and we can just craft lightning rest on my chest. We're gonna have a ghost dance, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, we'll explain it a little bit more in depth later, but it's uh, the core defense mechanic of this build. The way it ends up working is basically I will recover energy shield every time I'm hit, and I have three charges, and it's based on how much evasion I have. And then obviously you're getting hit a lot less when you have a lot of evasion. But there's some nice synergy there. It's funny, your we'll start dropping support gems that I'm never going to use again. We'll keep the quality ones. I need more pockets. There, got some support gems. We don't need anything else. Oh, and we're high enough level that we can use hypothermia now. Um, hi, Diala. You don't actually need to talk to her. No talking required. PoE, very nice antisocial game. Let's go buy a Grace. Oh, actually, we should be able to um, buy that in town. Because we are a Shadow. And then it's actually got some experience points on it. Right, I don't have a green support gem. See, earlier I had too many greens, now I've not enough. PoE in a nutshell. We're going to vendor all of these. I do have one chrome. We can hope. Nice! That's what we want. Oh, we'll just destroy this Viper Strike gem. There, now I have an aura support gem. Might be worth mentioning what happens if you die during a bus fight and dropping a portal before. True, that's a good idea. I usually do these on hardcore, so I didn't think about it. But yeah, I'll, I'll die during the next bus fight. Because I am on softcore for this. Great suggestion. I'll have a league start guide for this for uh before a league starts. Snoopy will be on my YouTube. Lab? So I usually do lab in crystal, because then you're around level 34, 35, and you one-hit lab a lot easier. Right, let's turn on our grace. Now a bit of an issue is our mana. So you can now either get an enduring mana flask, which could take some rolling, and maybe not even enough mana, that it feels good, but you can now turn off skitter bolts. We probably have enough damage that we don't care about it, and we were only using it for the shocking effect anyway. If you are playing softcore, you could also be using Malevolence for extra damage. Malevolence at this level, however, has pretty much the same damage as Skitterbots, so it's not really worth the mana restoration. And uh, Grace is going to make it a lot safer to level. Already now, it's giving us quite a lot of um, evasion. It's giving us like 500 right now. And um, once we get a Jade Flask, it'll be really, really good. Obviously, we are getting some uh, ES back when we're getting hit now. So, it's based on how much evasion we have. And then, obviously, even more when we're starting to get, like... I'll be looking for evasion energy shield gear. 
and uh, that's going to help it a lot. You don't need to kill this thing. Uh, that's funny because that's the div card I said that the guy made that caban. That's a nice little callback. Um, it's very rare to drop a humility card here in this aqueduct. It's very common in the next aqueduct, but it'll still take you five or six hours to farm now. We don't know why he got banned. This says on the website that he's banned. We, we I'm watching you. Right. All right. I'm going to die. Sometimes in Path of Exile, you are going to die. And especially when you're a new player, you might die a lot because, um... That's a red beast that's at the moment useful, but it is getting nerfed. And it would just give a talisman in the next patch. Anyway, we are now going to die. And show you what happens on death. So at the moment, when you die on softcore in Act 1 to 5, you do not lose anything. You only lose after the first Act 5 Kitava, and then after your second Kitava in Act 10, you will start losing experience. At the moment, you're basically just losing time. Say dead. Good doggy. So if you're fighting a boss that you think is scary, what you can do is you can put down a portal. Some boss rooms you won't really need to put a portal because it'll have like a checkpoint right outside and you can literally just corpse rush down the boss. But for example here, I am at a portal here now. This doesn't have a checkpoint anywhere near it. And I can be like, oh no! How do I kill this boss? Ah! Oh. Price is too strong. Okay, eventually this boss will kill me. Oh no! I've died! Now, if I click resurrect a checkpoint, I will spawn all the way back here and not have to run again. However, if I click resurrect in town, I will spawn right next to my portal, um, and I can just portal back down. So that can be really, really good for, um... Softcore especially, and even on Hardcore, people put portals down because you, um, want to be able to, like, come back and, or, like, portal out and, uh, get fast back. Nothing good here, and this isn't a very good base type for a ring, just gives us mana, which we don't need. Alright, let's see. Toilet break soon, but we're gonna... Go to the crystal first. Just need a moment to catch my Generally, you'll see that we're picking up pretty much every essence during the campaign. Only time we drop it is if one is on like a super tanky big monster. Then we'd probably not bother. And it's so nice to be dropping vortexes behind us too, because you'll see monsters running into it and kill themselves. So obviously it's extra experience points for us. Sacred Life Flask. So normally on Hardcore, I'll start caring a lot about Flask between 30 and 42. Ideally, I want at least an instant Life Flask that is rolled at 42. And then I won't roll again until 60, which is our in-game Flask. Shadow or Witch for Vortex? Uh, this is a Shadow, and uh, Witch is really good as well. Let's see, what do we do? We'll go over here and grab the AoE nodes, they'll feel really good early. Someone or something is keeping very busy in the bowels of this mountain. True. Uh oh. It's a ghost! Ooh. Very scary. Hey! Wow. So as you can see, ghosts, when they go inside something, can make them quite a lot more rewarding. Uh, this is a very good ring because this has an open suffix. It has life and lightning resist. So then we try to figure out which one of my rings I'm going to replace with that. Um, 
And we actually have to hold onto it. It's quite hard to replace right now because the resists are a little extreme. That's not that good. Did you explain flask bases? Uh, no, I'm gonna do that once I find a utility flask. Well, other than a quicksilver. It's always comforting to there. An honest that is a skill point. So this quest is in mines level money. two. You might have to run around a little bit to find it. But uh, once you find it and free her, you don't actually need to kill the boss guarding her. You just click on her and then run away. And uh, you will get an extra skill point. Now, it's very easy during the campaign. I might as well mention it now before I forget. It's very easy during the campaign to forget one or two skill point quests. Once you have killed the last boss and you're in the end game, you can write slash passives and it'll list every single one. It'll give you either 22 or 24, depending on if you help bandits. And, um, yeah, you can, um, you can, it'll tell you which ones you're missing. So after you've gotten to the end game, it'll say, for example, um, Piety's Pets zero. And skill duration isn't very important for this build, but AOE is. I'm going to grab the waypoint in this zone and then I'm going to quick a quick toilet break. I'm going to grab a drink. I will be right back.
All right, I am back. We are gonna go talk to Tatsuni, pick up an extra skill point. I am tired. I felt tortured yet. Oh, dear. So we did pick up an extra four link. Hmm. We could throw an alchemy on it. We do have three. I'm watching you. Hmm. No, I will not play reverse this. Of course not. All right, let's go see. Can I buy cruelty already? Cruelty is a really, really interesting support gem, which is basically for skills to have damage over time and um, a hit component. So it'll basically give you a damage over time buff based on that you did a big enough hit. Right, let's see. Now we're going to go to the Labyrinth. Yes, sit. If you haven't watched from the start, uh, please refrain from giving feedback. Right, now we're going to go do the lab. And if you go to peewelab.com, that will actually tell you um, what the lab layout look, looks like for that day. And that's the same between all the three difficulties. So like, um, whether you're on softcore, soul stuff on hardcore, etc. And then the easiest thing, damage-wise, would be the two-handed mace he has uh, as a weapon. Whenever you see that, that's like the absolute easiest one, especially for our build as we uh, chill. But um, if he has one-handed shield or dual wield, that's actually pretty rippy because he gets a wind slash. So he'll have like different loads of different mechanics. And in this case, if I don't destroy them, they will keep um, they will keep doing loads of like summons. But if I don't destroy them, I'll get an extra reward key. And you can see it's actually pretty easy to run around, especially when he's chilled. So I'm like actually gonna leave those up now. I can always like remove the mechanic, but then I will um, lose a key. And you can't remove it after you like left it up as a later thing. So now we can see we we only get to see what rooms we've been in here, but they don't change. Like it does stay the same. So um, there is a guy called Suit Size Small, and he will basically every single day run lab and put it up on his website so that people can um, so that people can see. What the lab looks like. This is a Val gem. Uh, we might as well explain Val gems while we're here. So this isn't one we can use, but Val gems, instead of using mana, they use the souls of your enemies and have charges on them. So the Val gem that we could have had by now is Val Cold Snap. And that basically, instead of like doing this effect, um, it actually puts a thing around me that becomes like a vortex almost. And, um, gives me frenzy charges every time it hits something and, uh, deals damage to everything around me. I'm gonna go to the other Esperance Trial. So you need to fight him three times and on the third time you finally kill him. If you are feeling like you're starting to get unmanageable mana issues, something like picking up Soul Siphon is actually quite nice early. 10 mana per enemy killed really like adds up for like, not for bosses, but for like killing random things. Um, these things are kind of similar to the last area. If I don't kill them, then I get an extra reward key. I do recommend like, especially if you don't want to die repeatedly in lab, it can be really nice to like kill all of these mechanics. Um, that just depends on how comfortable you feel at this point with, like, actually dodging. Company, I 
All right, let's see. And generally, for a lab, going in the top right is pretty much what you want to do. Here. You see there's a lot of traps. Some of them don't even do that much damage, especially in the first lab. Things are pretty mild, and there are four labs. There's a normal, cruel, merciless, and uh, uber lab. And then um, that's all the ones that you have to do. And then there are three additional reward-only labs that will give you either special enchants, uh, extra enchants, or just more rewards. And they're called uber, uber labs. But they have nothing to do with the uh, class requirement things. You see, you see, I'm always going like straight to the top. This is not always the case, but it's like the most likely case for where the next zone is. Always go to the top. Nice. Let's see. Yeah, we're trying to limit a lot of the info. I don't want to go too much into things. This POE is already a little bit too overwhelming. Also, before the first or second or third trial, there is a recipe that you should pick up as well. Crafting recipe. Um, another gem that I haven't mentioned, just because I kind of forgot about it. I used it on my Ruthless character, which is like a Giga Hard mode. Uh, but Decoy Totem can be really, really nice against bosses when you're new and still struggling a little bit to read, like, what the boss is going to do. Decoy Totem can be, like, extremely nice. Like, obviously on software you can just, like, corpse rush bosses. Um, the lab that we just did now is sort of, like, medium core. Where if I died now in the last room, I would have to reroll the entire thing over again from scratch. But you won't lose your character or anything. So, I'm not going to use this. Um, because I try not to use anything that's extremely unreasonable to get. But the thing that I just got would have been an insane drop. Uh, anyway, we're gonna do our ascendancy thing first. So, we have now gotten this. Hmm, what do I even want? I think we take polymath first. So, this is a very interesting ascendancy. So, obviously, you saw that there were two other choices that we ignored, but we are going to be a trickster. And, um, this... Uh, ascendancy points, so you get two ascendancy points, so we have one travel node and then one keystone. And then 3% more damage for each different type of mastery you've allocated. So if you do like 8, you know, you're getting a decent chunk of damage. If you manage to get 10 different masteries selected, you get 30% more damage, which is pretty big. That's over one support gem. Um, you're also getting recover life, energy shield, on mana, on kill. So already right now, we have... See here that we have a damage of time mastery, we have an elemental mastery, we have a cold mastery, and we could for one point pick up an energy shield mastery, but it's not that big a deal because none of these actually do anything that I care about right now. Um, we do also get an enchant. I always ignore the, the normal one because there's no enchant that can happen there that I care about. It is only like a good thing for your glove and it, it matters very little. Um... We care very little about that. Let me pick up one more shield. Um, I was just checking that one that I dropped if that was good, but it didn't have anything to do with cold. So I was like, we'll drop that. Um, now, next up, I'll talk about the ring that we got. I just had to identify it and show it to you. What do the glove enchantments actually do? Like a little bit extra damage, like a little decoy that runs around and can actually get you killed because bosses will target it and it's not consistent when it spawns. Um, they're, they're mostly annoying, except by two of them, but new players don't need to worry about that. Yeah, we're actually going to vendor that. It's not even a good implicit ring. And that's bad. 
All right, we'll keep that. So, Mark of Submission. This would have been an insanely strong item to get. I'm not going to use it because it's simply unrealistic to get this early. But um, this is actually something that I would normally use as a level unique. What this does is I could put my Frostbite inside it and then everything I hit gets Frostbitten without me like needing to actually do it. So we're just going to put that in there and forget about it. So I don't want to do anything that's super unrealistic. Alright, let's continue. Yeah, that would have been extremely good. Like, I would have used that most likely until I was like level 75 to 85. So that would have been very good. So now we gotta go clear out some side areas. My need level 36 for those buffs. So you can actually pre-dock these areas that they come out of, and you'll see that they'll basically insta-die as they come out when you're in the cage. And you see that we have a decent amount of damage. We're recovering energy shield, we're recovering life, we're recovering mana. The build is really, really starting to flow a little bit more now. A lot of builds can be pretty clunky early. And you'll see that I no longer really have any mana issues when I have this much mana left. I'm barely even pressing my mana flask because just killing things gives me so much mana now. So that is really, really nice. The build is really starting to feel good. Now, at this point, I would say Occultist would in some ways feel even better. Because at this point, you get Profane Bloom as Occultist, which arguably is one of the most fun things in the game. And that is like big purple explosions when you're killing things, which is actually getting buffed in the upcoming league. Like that part in specific. And don't feel like too disheartened if you yourself are running into a lot of dead ends and stuff. It's very normal. There are so many different like zones and it takes a long time to learn them. Actually, something I haven't asked for before, but specifically for those of you watching on YouTube that are playing along, um, I would love some comments on how many hours it took you to finish the campaign while watching the video. That'd be really cool, because I haven't asked for that before. I haven't asked for that before. We're not going to go for the AOE here. So I really like doing half of each zone before I go to the bosses. Um, there's actually no good reason to do that anymore, because especially when I'm doing these runs and I'm showing everything off, I am so overleveled. The reason that I do that is basically out of a racing habit. Because this would be the number one area where you're the most likely to be underleveled. And each first zone is less than the second zone. So it's basically just like you get slightly more efficient XP when you're racing. And you have a less risk of becoming underleveled. So I usually do half of each zone before I kill the boss. So you get the waypoints. Another Chaos Orb. We do get quite a lot of currency. Just need a and you've seen that we haven't really needed to use any currency on Gary yet, which is quite nice. You most likely won't have to. You just pick up rare, see if there's anything with life and resists. And that's, that's pretty much all you need. We are now level 36, so we can put on the new gloves. Um, we do need to craft something on those. Probably going to have to actually craft fire. And they are quite nice. So we're going to do a different higher level craft. We'll show that once we get to the next waypoint. Alright. I'm pretty smooth though. I'm trying to be a little bit faster now. So it won't take as long. We're only in act 4. And there are 6 to go. Plus one cold spells is great for this. All right, let's see. So now we do have slightly better crafts, um, which I think you get from the crystal veins. 
craft, but we have now 21 to 28 fire. We're going to do that because this is obviously a quite nice glove. This can take us all the way to maps. Uh, and we're going to put the cruelty in, and then you'll see that I'm now going to start getting a buff. Um, need somebody to sell to. And then I need lightning rest on something, so I'm going to put that on my helmet. I'm just going to do a low one. Actually, we'll do the mid one. It does have some life on it, and then I'm rest capped easily. Right, now we're going to go kill Comb and Dareso. This is a play with me or a leveling guide. This is a everything explained. It's like a more basic play with me. Play with me is so generally just four hours and I don't explain everything. Everything explained takes so long because I try to explain pretty much everything with the game. Well, as much as possible. So they're a bit slowed down. Honestly, there were a few more things I could explain better in this even, but it's it's hard to get everything right. It's also like impossible to script an eight hour episode. Or I don't want to do it at least. <laughs> the, these are hard. I just I generally just they like, do them off the cuff with no prep and they get slightly better each time and we get feedback from people in the videos. Cruelty was already explained, but that is a good one for hybrid ones. So cold snap since it has a dot and a hit. Um, you see the buff is basically uh, at max 40%. That means that the damage over time portion is also getting increased damage. Sort of a really, really good gem for things that do a hit and a uh, damage over time. Just Are you making new bell guides for 3.20? Yeah, we do that every single league. Every single league will have new bell guides. I never recommend my old bill guides. Well, very rarely. Alright, King Comb is dead. As you saw, he has um, things coming from the side zones, but a lot of bosses are getting quite a lot easier now, so there's like less reason to explain a lot of them. Um, and that's just because we have so much damage now. Like, And if you're feeling like you're low on damage for whatever reason, um, this is an insane physical weapon that we're not going to go into, but... The fact that it has both the percentage fizz and flat fizz makes it very good for melee. You. Obviously, we are not melee. So, doesn't matter. Um, we could think about getting a new weapon for this one, just because the implicit is, uh, would be better on a new wand. So, if you see here, now that you see that we're getting up to 23%. So, we can grab this one. It's 21, but at least it's almost already linked. And then, if I link it... Nice. I will use the Essence of Woe. Okay, it's a tiny increase, but at least I got some resist. It was a pretty decent gamble. Go where you are needed. Let's go kill the resto. Um, oh, I barely ever get on slot. I just have it on frost bomb, but I usually wouldn't. It's just left over, and there's no reason to remove it, but. Usually, there would be too much socket pressure that I would bother keeping it at this point. You don't... You don't have a great way of getting Onslaught early in this build. You end up using a Onslaught Silver Flask, which we'll talk about when we find one. Usually. Until I end game methods. I do feel rich after playing Ruthless. It's like those, uh, you know those things you can put on your wrists that make your arm heavier? It feels like taking that off. It do you feel like taking that off? Yeah, like the Naruto dude. Alright, this is like a tiny mini boss. They have like no health. And our build is incredibly strong. Hopefully the people watching along feel like their build is as strong as mine. I feel like the worst thing when watching something is like watching the streamer or content creator be like six times stronger than you are. That's something I always try to avoid when doing stuff. So my rotation currently, obviously Vortex is auto-casting. Then I'm doing one cold snap, 
followed by one creeping frost on W, then a frost bomb, and then a curse. Last. And I just keep that up. If you're ever wondering why quite often that feeling happens, it's because people will do that thing I hate where they're like, oh yeah, you totally don't need these things. I have them, but you don't need them. That's why I like starting entirely from scratch because you get to see exactly what happens and what I do. That's like my favorite way to do lead content or guide content in general. So this is really nice, but it is level 38 to use. It's unlinked, so we are going to vendor them. Like, you see, we're not keeping yes. anything. We're not... Like, no gear that we find at this level matters pretty much. There, yeah, we're going towards more AoE. That'll make our Vortex slightly bigger. It'll feel really good in all our area grounds. An amazing creature, this piece. What is your main skill here? Um, so technically, Vortex is your main skill. That's like auto casting, and it's a mouse button one. And then I don't use Creeping Frost that much. That's a little preference. Like some people play like this, where they're like Creeping Frosting a lot in front of them. I personally really like just running around with Cold Snap because as long as you've gotten one Frenzy charge, you're, you know, they're they're stacking up pretty fast. We'll grab that. And honestly, at the moment, most items I'm only picking up to sell for transmutes and and ults and alchemy shards, because unless something has, like this build is a little socket intensive. I actually care a lot about my sockets. I could go down to a three link and I would have more than enough damage. But if I can avoid that, that is obviously better. Um, this is actually why this is uh, such a strong build in ruthless because it has so many active gems. And I feel like even though it has a lot of active gems, you don't really need to press that much. Like right now, while playing, I'm mostly just keeping my Quicksilver up. I am auto-casting Vortex, and if monsters are outside of my Vortex, I'm right-clicking them with Cold Snap. Now, one bad thing about this build that I personally don't like, and why I enjoy Occultist a lot more than Trickster, uh, is Trickster is a lot better tankiness. It's a lot tankier because of Coast Shrouds and the way we can have a very, very layered multi-level defense at the end game. But Occultist getting Profane Bloom, so fun, dude. It's like these nice purple explosions that just blow up your screen is just super enjoyable. It's hard to beat. Very hard to beat. So it's definitely worth looking into like videos of people playing Occultist. It wouldn't have a very different experience um, than following what I'm doing. Um, the start would be a little different. I guess maybe I, I actually went over here on my Occultist, so... The skill points are a little different, but I know DS Lily has an occultist guide and she makes really good content. I don't think I have an up-to-date occultist guide and I, I don't like recommending like two old videos. Because sometimes something has changed and people feel weird and... It's nice to follow like things that are up-to-date. Using a white chest? Why? Just for the four link. I don't really need anything more right now. No reason to use currency. Nothing can really happen to this chest. It's going to make a massive difference to me right now. I, I'm already resist capped. I wouldn't care if I got an extra 50 life. I have 972. That is plenty for killing Malachi. This is one of the second or third hardest boss in the entire campaign. Um, I'll start doing less damage so it'll last a bit longer. So this is pretty hard. You can blink through it. You have to be very careful. I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend just staying close to her. Also, it's usually faster. Do remember we are chilling her as well. And then her melee attack can almost one shot you. She's very scary. That is one of the hardest boss fights. A large amount of players, even on hardcore. Oops, have I? I right clicked a creeping frost by accident. Even on hardcore, people will die quite a lot to this. Is there any world where you can leak start flicker? I never recommend leak starting melee pretty much. I always recommend, as well, at least for new players, I recommend casters.
Well, Act 5 Kitav is harder, but Act 10 is easier. Act 5 Kitav is the hardest, I'd argue. Alright, let's see. Do we have a lot of transmutes? We have some. Not really anything good. Anyway, we have a blue or a white one there. So, there are three mini-bosses that you have to kill here. You have to kill Chevron, Dodri, and Maligaro. And then you have to loot their entrails and stuff like that. Well, it's actually Malachi's entrails. It's like his, um... It's like the things from Harry Potter. True, I did get Crafting Blood Immunity there. So, um, let me remove Vortex so that I can die. Here, watch this. This is one of the worst debuffs in the game, Bleed. Now, my flask has Corrupting Blood slash Bleed Immunity, which is really, really good. Honestly, you're going to have a hard time getting it this early. So these two zones from Belly of the Beast onwards is incredibly dangerous because of that. Dodri here is very deadly. You'll see how much damage she does. And she also has a triple pronged attack. As she'll do sometimes. Where is it? Do it! Maybe she needs to be lower life. Anyway. She has some scary attacks. She will also become empowered if you curse her. So be careful about cursing her. She will eat your curse and gain unholy might. And she can one hit you pretty easily. Definitely pretty scary. Honestly, I would say Dodri is scarier than the actual main boss itself. Kind of running out of inventory space for the next quest item, or I would not have dropped that. But I can't be bothered going back to town. Mostly, again, crippling laziness. Very important. Algaro! Thank you. Oh yeah, sorry. The rings on the floor are basically curses. And they like alternate. So one slows you, one makes you take more damage, and one makes you do less damage. Okay, we'll just go back to town so we can vendor. Any tips for new players to not have to burn out on doing the repeat story back to back? Um, it's a very hard problem to solve on softcore because I would argue it's mainly a softcore problem. And I think the reason why the campaign is so unenjoyable on softcore is because nothing matters, right? The gear that I have now doesn't really matter because all the way to maps, I could corpse rush any boss without any meaningful penalty. Um, so that makes it quite unenjoyable. Playing hardcore changes that, but I still don't recommend that for new players. The number one thing as well is just speedrunning. Um, once, um, once you actually, um, learn how to do it faster, it becomes a lot tedious. It's also not a big problem for your first few hundred hours. Um, so you might have noticed that I'm, like, quickly putting things in. Uh, I'm just doing, uh, control shift clicking. And once you start buying tabs and stuff, there are affinities, and control shift clicking bypasses these. And affinities will basically... Sort them for you, sort of. My anti-hero of hubris. Right. Right, right, right. Oh, actually, I can show another thing that we could do now. But yeah, um, Malachi, surprisingly, has very little HP per phase. So, he's kind of easy. Um, Piety here as well has very little HP. So, you can just dot them once and then run away. They will die with how much damage we have. Um, I'm just running around him in a circle. You can see, like, pretty efficient. But yeah, you can just, like, throw your full dots on him and they will die. They have very little HP. Piety is finally helping us now. And this is actually the last time where we meet Piety until, you know, she becomes a boss in maps later. Woo! Damn. He finally helped us.
there. He doesn't even do that much damage to us. We're actually quite tanky at the moment. We have our ghost shrouds. And we're starting to move towards... We don't have layered defenses yet. Layered defenses is when you have like multiple things that the enemy needs to get through to actually damage you. Uh, which we'll get a lot of on this build. So in this stage, you need to kill the heart before you're able to deal damage to Malachi. Obviously, as you see, we are... It's... We're shredding him. And it's just the same rotation still. I'm auto-spamming Vortex. And then I'm hitting him with the right click with Cold Snap. Then W for the Creeping Frost. T for the Curse. And E for the Frost Bomb. The Frost Bomb and the Curse, obviously not that important. Uh, you do want to use them if you are up to the clicks. Um, but what they do is the Frost Bomb basically makes him lose 15% Cold Res. And the um, Frost Bite is minus 29 Cold Res. So it all adds up. There, we're going to pick up everything. We're just going to vendor a bunch of stuff. So this is a bad guy? Yeah, he's a bad guy. He does like loads of experiments That's on people. Point, that is a pretty nice helmet, but we don't have the link. And we're just kind of, we're not that high on transmutes at the moment, so we're going to sell everything on ID. Go where you are needed. Right. We're going to move on to the next act. We are now in Act 5. Oh, and we get a support gem here. We get a really good support gem here. We get Bone Chill. Uh, we, we don't care about anything Oyun gives us right now. Golems are annoying. Um, right. I think we put that on Cold Snap. So we're going to remove FXC and put Bone Chill instead. It just makes everything do more cold damage. Is there an option to help or join the boss instead? I wish because he offers you eternal life. I don't know if that means he transfers you to softcore, but he offers you eternal life and we're not even allowed to like humor it? I think that's kind of crazy. Like we've already shown that we're clearly the bad guy. Like why not let us be real monsters? Just need a moment. Now we're just going to run through this zone. There's not much to explain here. I can do a little lore tidbit. I don't know if people like that or not. Um, fun fact. A lot of the endgame bosses are actually us, um, which is really, really cool because uh, in Path of Exile, they do like time jumps. So after we killed some of the endgame bosses called Uber Elder, etc., um, those exiles or like the previous versions of us went insane. And another friend of ours, Zana, trapped us in the Atlas and we completely lost it. Um, and she asked us like multiple times, like, please stop mapping. Please stop going back in. And then uh, we went insane. She locked us in the Atlas and we started killing everybody. We started killing all our old friends. And um, so, for example, uh, the four in-game bosses, Drox is based on the Marauder. Where Tanya is based on the Witch. al Hasmin is based on the Shadow. And uh, Baran is based on the Templar. And it's like supposed to be, you know, like iconic versions of those. And then... Um, it's really cool because now when you finally eventually kill the endgame boss Cyrus, the last thing Zana says to you is now exile. You leave the Atlas alone. And we don't. And then she leaves. And now we don't know where she is. So we are actually the bad guys. The cool little lore tidbit. Now in the next zone, we're about to be slaughtering innocents that are just running away from us. They did nothing wrong. They do give XP though. But weren't, wasn't it us looking for her father? Uh, yeah, we saved, uh, well, we didn't save her dad. We failed saving her dad. And then I guess she took that personally. The quest forward here that gives you a ring. Normally you try to like get a rough idea. Like for example, my sapphire ring is better to replace than my topaz ring. That's why I took a topaz one. This is a really good shield, but we're not playing a minion build, so we're not going to do anything with that. We're going to look and see if I have an essence and then use it on the belt, which I do, but it didn't turn into anything nice. So we're looking for a life and one or two resists, or a resist and an open suffix. That'd be really good. You took a sapphire? I did. That's what I said. Easier to replace my sapphire than my topaz. The Topaz has life.
Are we not uh, are we not hanging publicly at the beginning of PO2? We are bad, yeah, for sure. Um, in Act 1, when you first create a character, there's a little bulletin board. Uh, and it'll actually tell you all the sins you did. Like, for example, the Scion killed her husband. The witch. Can't remember exactly what happened to the witch. I think her sisters got killed and then she burned everyone's children to death. So, you know, they have actually committed crimes to be sent to Rekas to begin with. Uh, in the left of this instance is the Mias meter, which gives you a skill point when you hand it in in town. And then after that, we have to go to the right. Yeah, we're definitely the bad guys. Everyone's kind of bad in Ray class. Everyone's kind of bad. Um, I can't remember if this skip works. But it would be amusing. I mean, normally we would have to go around. Hey, it does work! You just flame this through that tiny little gap. Uh, Kitten Cat Noodle already has like a really good lore series on YouTube. I'm not that invested in the lore. I do know a lot of it though. It's fun. Yeah, there's definitely different levels of bad. The most evil person in the game is probably Hillock. Probably Hillock and then Venarius. Yeah. I will not even utter Hillux's crimes. A lot of bad things. Like 20 bad things. Very evil. Do we know the lore bit behind the Harbingers? No, there was supposed to be some sort of mystery puzzle and a language we were supposed to figure out. A lot of people are hoping for a continuation there. There we got a hallowed life flask and now I'm actually going to care about rolling a life flask. Because um, what I want to try to get now is either a bubbling or a seething. They actually might not be called that at this low level. But we basically either want a instant or a half instant life loss. This is particularly good for hardcore. Because obviously you're very rarely in this game going, Oh no! I am dying! Any second now I will be dead. I am dead. Right? It's very like bursty damage that kills you in this game. Um, so... Right, so now this is a prefix, and that is a prefix, so we are going to roll it instead of using an augmentation. But if it had a suffix like remove freeze, then we would augment it. I didn't know the Lord behind Hila. Oh, he like raped and killed loads of children and women. He's pretty bad. He's, uh, he's definitely a very bad guy. Very dark lore. Let's see. Let's uh, roll this flask. Hopefully you don't want to use too much. And honestly, keeping 50% recovery rate is not bad. Uh... There. There. That's what we wanted. That'll save us from death. Who's the nicest person in Ray class? I don't know. Einar? Lily? See, we're gonna grab a Jade flask here. Remember. And we'll talk about utility flask. Bestel? Maybe. Practice. Price this XL. Honestly, no, it's definitely not Einar. Einar is going to herald fourth the apocalypse. Sounds Mark my words. All right, let's grab the skill points. Um, so utility fast and path of XL are very strong. There are loads of different base fasts and base types, and you've seen that I've been upgrading my life fast and mana fast. That's pretty simple. Better life fast, bigger number. Until you get to divine. Divine is the best one, not eternal. Um, doesn't show much matter why, but anyway, uh, utility fast. Now, this is going to give me evasion when I press it. I do want to roll it a little bit. Um, I don't want anything that makes it last shorter. So anything with increased effect, less duration is bad. Uh, increased duration is good. Increased charge recovery is good. This is fine. It doesn't really have anything I care about. 
Um, but I am pretty okay with it. I am probably going to go down to one Quicksilver now. And um, I'll probably roll it a little bit and hope for Charge Recovery. Let's see, this with Charge Recovery would be amazing. This is great. Reduce charges used and increase movement speed. And now we're at the point of the game where I'm killing enough monsters to replenish enough charges. We're going to grab some life over here. And then we're going to grab Arcanist Dominion. And then we're going to move on to other things. Just need a moment to catch my breath. I have no idea, I'm missing. Who is Kitava? So, Kitava is one of the gods. There are a lot of gods of Rayclass. A lot of them are, you know, pretty like similar to like Greek gods and stuff, right? You have like God of Trickery, Tangmasu. Um, and then you have the God of Gluttony, which is Kitava. And all the other gods, you know, when they're hanging out, uh, we have like one story of Kitava where he was hanging out with all the other gods at a picnic like thing, at a feast. And he eats all the food, and they're like, bro. And they lock him at the bottom of the ocean, and then he eats the entire ocean and all the fish. And they're like, bro! And then, eventually, they end up, like, locking him properly away. Because, obviously, Kitava doesn't stop. He doesn't care. Um, and then, eventually, they imprison him. And I think they imprison him inside a Statue of Innocence. It's the only cutscene in PoE. And then... What other lore is there? Um, yeah, like I said, Tangmazu, the god of trickery. We haven't met him yet. He is the delirium god. Um, I think that's semi-confirmed canon. Um, so delirium is a mechanic that we actually encounter here for the first time in Chamber of Innocence. So I could see that now while running through this. Um, and where I am right now is a really, really good leveling area. And that's because every little side thing will have blue monsters, like I said earlier, which give more XP. Um... And you see now, I have very much evasion, so we're, we're getting pretty tanky. But yeah, this is a good leveling area. A lot of people stay here on Hardcore till 60, and like I said, Delirium is first seen here. And Tangmasu... Um, Tangmasu messes with a lot of people, and obviously tries to mess with us, the Exile, with Delirium. And he's actually the reason why Solaris and Lunaris, two other gods, hate each other. They used to be super close, and then he started messing with them. And I can't remember exactly what he did, but then he basically made one sister blind the other and ruin their friendship. So they used to be super close, then he ruined it. He's very mean. Very, very mean. Lunaris is blind? Yeah, that's it. He even brags about it. So this was a really, really good strongbox. To, okay, kind of insane strongbox to get early. Um, that was a mirrored strongbox. That's why it dropped two uh, of the great mallets. Um, and it's actually um, uh, it's actually too low to naturally be six socketed. So it's very rare to get a six socket this early. And uh, the only reason that we got it was that this was a um, yes. every item in the box has up to two additional sockets. Now, if these were rare, so say they were called, you know, um, like this one's called Blood Crusher. Let's say this was called Blood Crusher. If I sold both of these, they would sell for a Chance Orb. And the reason for that is that the Chance Orb recipe is two items with the same name. So be careful when you're selling mirrored items. Like that. Boom, one Chance Orb. We're still going to sell them for Ox. Yes. yes. Oh, we could have sold it for Chance. But thing to keep an eye out for. Right, we are now going to switch to um, instant life flask. Just vendor all our other flasks. I will keep the sacred mana flask. Down hmm. Hmm, I don't want instant on mana flask. I don't know if enduring has enough mana recovery to not be annoying during boss fights at the moment, but we'll try. Enduring got nerfed quite hard. It didn't used to have a penalty. Um, but right now it might be too annoying. Without any mana skills. Either way, it's definitely fine for mapping. We don't even need um, 
We can grab a hallowed mana flask anyway and see if we can roll that instead. So, um, normally I would grind here quite a lot on hardcore. Not just for XP, but you usually grind here because you also want to start gearing up. And that is because now in the next act, we are going to lose 30% all risk. So that means that we want to have at least 105 of each, and we don't have enough fire and cold, so we are going to be uncapped. That isn't super important because I am softcore, but on hardcore, I would be here until at least 45 or 46. Sometimes, uh, especially for new players, you could go all the way to 50 to 52 and still get a decent amount of XP. You'll get a bunch of gear, um, and that's just because it's such a good leveling zone. Um, eventually I'll have both Determination and Grace, most likely, yeah. I don't currently have a full guide for this, but by the time the League is out, we will have a full League Start Guide for this. And we do those, like, very step-by-step. Step. Ole! Um, as you saw, I can just, I use my movement skills to dodge a lot of the boss abilities. Them being instant makes that very nice. And again, just, like... We have, we have such a big advantage over other builds by the fact that he's... Look how slow he is. Like, how is he possibly ever going to hit me with that? He can literally never hit me. Oh, that could hit. Yeah, I don't know. The mana is a little annoying with an Enduring. So even though it's a good thing to get Endurings because they're rare, um, they just don't recover enough mana anymore. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Another reason why overleveling for this boss is so good is because it is actually quite a hard boss. It might not look like it, but we also have a very, very strong build. And you gotta remember, very often new players will get here with a bad build, or they are super underleveled, or they haven't found the gear they need. And then it can be really, really hard. So even though we are actually underleveled now, like if I overleveled here to 48, we would literally snap kill him, like one second per phase. Um... But it's actually hard when you're a new player and you don't know what you're doing. And a lot of people don't follow guides as well. Makes it even harder. You die. So that last ability that he was about to do, you could actually just log out from it. Um, he's supposed to put down like a statue that you can hide behind. Um, making it pretty safe, but he was like, no statue for you. You could also portal to town. Um, that is a pretty good ring. It does have a decent amount. Can we use it though? And it does have open prefix for life as well. Um, hmm. you deserve once Kitava has gobbled up. More alteration shards, thank you. Right, uh, none of the gear I found was any good. There was nothing interesting on it. We are going to replace that and vendor the old one. Keeping for new characters isn't bad either. Um, I'm going to go to my hideout. I'm actually going to craft a uh, high cold rest on my chest for one alchemy. And we're going to go kill Katava. And now, if I was on Hardcore, I would craft life on the ring as well. I do not really care about that, because we're Softcore, and we don't need life. Uh, let's see, is there anything else I really need right now? Oh, yes. Actually, I really do want this cluster. I really do want this cluster. Now, another thing to know, we are about to be under rest cap right now. Is that a big deal? No, because we can actually grab so much resist on our skill tree as well. First off, we do have three things here that we could grab if we really wanted to, but we have 10 all risks or 13 all risks here by taking practical application, and that on top of that, being really, really solid, also has stats on it. And strength and dex are the two stats that we're at the most risk of being low. Also, if you see here, there's like a little gap in the wall, you can um, blink through those. And the same goes for like pretty much anywhere in the game with like windows and stuff, you can very often blink through them. Diamond Foss, we're not going to use, we're not going to cover. The worst part about doing PoE content is there's too much to explain. You can't explain everything.
And yeah, we will have loads of League Starters up on YouTube. Um, we're also going to do loads of collabs with other creators. At the moment, the list, we might not be able to do everything, but currently we're looking at the following. And then we'll we'll trim the list, depending on how much time I have. Um, Cold Out Trickster, Bane Trickster, Toxic Rain with Vala CA, Explosive Arrow, Bone Shatter or Rage Vortex or some form of melee, Minion, Seismic, uh, Backup Skills in case I have extra time, Poison Concoction, Blightfall, Blade Blast, Spike, Shield Crush, Cyclone, Shockwave, um, Collabs so far that have said yes, Lily, Noogie, Poss, Yassi, Karatha, and potentially Quantry. So that means that this might be the most videos we've ever posted for a league start. So I think they need to start today. Why Bane Trickster, not a cultist? Trickster is tankier. You get more than enough damage. I better start making that TR POB. Yeah, if you could have one ready already. It should be super. We don't even need to wait for anything this league, right? Now that we have the patch notes, we have literally everything. We can start today. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to record it before I go to sleep. We get Val CA today. I also bought additional cosplay stuff to give you guys some extra cringe intros. Ah! No! No! This is terrible. I accidentally went to town before picking up my quest item. Hello, Bannon. Oh wait, you don't have a reward for me. You don't have a reward for me. Right, we're gonna keep picking this up. Now, um, since I'm, I've been over explaining a lot of things and I've already streamed for five hours and I will actually run out of time because I, I have so much to do. We're gonna try to post three or four YouTube videos per day. Um, is the goal, but, um, since we have so much to do, we're gonna skip. There is a side quest in that zone here. You basically go at the bottom of the zone I'm in right now, and you just have to run around in the zone until you find the three quest items. Go to town and hand it in for a quest rewards. It's not really something that I need to hold your hand for. I'm lost, better restart. Um, alright, we got Voltaxic Soul Fight. Now these are always worth picking up even if you do not plan to engage with the delve mechanic and I am not about to explain the delve mechanic. The reason it's worth picking up no matter what is that there is a small chance every time you click one of those nodes that you get a divination card that gives you 10 alterations, which this early is absolutely huge and I'd say every other league start they will give me one. So not every, but very often. Enough that it's worth clicking. 10 alterations this early is pretty big. Is that div card not yours? No. I have a different one. I have Sea of Blue. Doesn't drop from that. I remember where Sea of Blue drops. Grotto? Right, Kitava Act 5, this is probably the second hardest boss fight during the entire campaign. Um, the hardest would probably be the Act 9 end, end boss. And then the reason this is so hard is because it has an incredibly fast slam. Obviously we're at a huge advantage here due to us being... Uh, ooh, uh, that's the slam. We have a huge advantage due to uh, him being slow. Most skills will have to have it 20% faster almost. And these are pretty dangerous. They do like a slam, like a sunder slam. Oh no. 
Whew. Right, so there you saw a great example of why instant life blasts are so good. Um, generally, that's the kind of burst damage that kills you. So if I had over time flash there, I 100% would have died. Not that that would have mattered, we're softcore. Um, and this is another reason why we over level and over gear a little bit on hardcore. So quite often I would have 1.5 or 1.6k life here, then it actually wouldn't have killed me. Um, but yeah, scary. So now you see that I'm 56. Slash played pretty slow. Four hours. Well, okay, realistically pretty fast, but... Um, obviously I do speed running, so we're, we're trying to slow this down to explain everything. Now, um, to the left, you have a little extra zone that you absolutely do want to do, uh, because it unlocks Lily for all your future characters to sell you support gems in your hideout. We don't need it right now, um, because we already have most of the support gems I want, and we can go do it whenever I want, but very useful to do. I'm going to take a quick break, and, uh... We'll be back to continue Act 5. I am back. Also, I love cats. It's so great. Like, if I ever, like, play with a toy in front of Loki's eyes, he doesn't care at all. I hide it behind something, and he's like, I don't fucking think so. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Alright, got another exile kill. They always drop a bunch of good stuff. So now we're a little under rest cap. There's Delirium with Tangmazu. What do you want, Tangmazu? Haven't you hurt enough? Right, let's see. And then for those that like other builds, they have other everything explains as well. The way Delirium works is that it makes everything, the further you get away from the mirror, do more, uh, not more damage, but just be tankier and it'll have random rewards. Once you get to three on one, you'll get one of another. And uh, it'll have like those pustules, I guess they're called. 
and uh, killing the monsters inside those will increase the bars. I have bound like the end delirium key to B. So now when I hit B, and someday I'm not able to hit the fourth reward, um, I will hit, well, maybe. No. No. Anyway, when I hit B, it'll end and give me the reward. Uh, if that was a blue one, that would have been great. Like getting a bl blue five link. We will pick it up to sell it. And then this side area we don't need to do. It just gives us like a belt or an amulet. So we don't care about that. Let's see. Honestly, let's take the resists now instead. Just so we're more closer to rest cap. How does one make a build? Do you put the gear or the tree in first? Ah, uh, the tree. Generally, when I make a build, I make sure that the build works on absolutely awful awful gear and then you start scaling it because if a build is like pretty decent um on really really good gear or sorry really really bad gear then it's generally going to be very solid like you'll see a lot of people have like insane pobs and yeah it's like there are it depends a little bit on the build but what, technically what makes a good league starter is very often, builds that end up having a very, very low floor of entry, where you need very little, those builds will traditionally have a very low ceiling. There are some exceptions, like obviously Explosive Fire Champion Arrow had a very high ceiling and a very low floor. Um, but like, for example, generally, your League Starter build will not end up being the single most powerful build, right? There are some builds, like for example, a really, really advanced build called Instacker, that might cost as much as like 300 exalted orbs, which we haven't even covered yet, to actually start playing. Um, but they will like be able to like scale way further than anything else, right? And that's like people will min max the hell out of those builds. Okay, divine orbs now. You know what? Cheap. Yeah, we'll update the A. I don't think there's much to update. I do remake them every time just to make sure I haven't missed anything. But that's definitely one where you could pretty much copy paste the old one. Won't be much for me to like have to do, but we do double check everything. The worst thing is the Deity and Dawn belt for the EA. A lot harder to get now. I do mean Divine is he still AFKing on RuneScape? No, right now I'm focusing on this. I have so much beginner content and stuff I want to create for people. This requires my focus. Right. That boss can suck a lot more. So we have a very powerful skill. So hopefully everybody playing, and I'm hoping to see that in the comments. I would love it to be one of the, uh, most people's smoothest experience. Now, later for like super endgame bosses, you will definitely have to like invest more to be able to get like really good damage. And this build is never going to be something that'll have like 20 to 30 million damage. I think you probably cap out between like 3 and 7 million somewhere. Um, but it is a very smooth league starter. And in my opinion, the thing that's the absolutely most important thing is to have an extremely smooth league starter that sets you up, lets you get everything fast and have a character to fall back on if other things aren't working out. And, uh, yeah. Gonna be really nice. Won't Frostbite be extra strong once they start? Yep. I'm gonna be getting a big single target poof. 3 to 7 million is still good though. Yes, but a lot of people are, you know, crazy expectations. I, I, I just think like the, like you can post almost anything as long as you limit expectations. Like, for example, if you're posting a guide and it falls off in maps, that's fine as long as you tell people that beforehand. Like, if it's just to get somebody strong through the campaign and learn the game. Just, just don't lie about expectations. But this is going to be my build because it'll be, or most likely going to be one of my builds. Because it's so strong against everything, has really good multi-layer defenses, and I'll be able to kill all the uber bosses on it. Not the most amazing mapper. Mm. Mm. 
Doesn't have an open suffix, so I cannot be bothered switching. Um, we don't care about clusters, nor am I going to explain that right now. We're going to vendor everything else. None of them have sockets I'm interested in. And destroy that out of spite. Um, there. The skill point for killing the dude, and we do get Pantheon, so I'm going to actually wait until we get Tuchel uh, or Franking to explain that. There, so for skill points, we put in uh, one point in practical application and another in life and energy shield. So we're almost res cap now. Need a little bit more cold res. I think a new belt would fix that. Or, you know, a new amulet. Honestly, we could just go buy a new amulet probably. Um, that's dex and int. I'm just going to buy that. Hopefully, yeah, that's better than that anyway. Alchemy orb. Okay. Uh, that's good. That's good. Is there a POB for this yet? Just no. need a moment or we'll make a guide for it, though. We will be making a guide for it. There, we'll just do the one transmute craft, and boom, we are Hello. almost resist cap. We don't have fire now. I think my boots have open fire res. There. All right, now we are cracking. 88, 80, 82. Need to turn my aura back on because since I took off the boot and the gem wasn't there anymore, it lost it. Those things are a Dark Souls tribute and uh, they're very dangerous. They really made them very notable monsters. They used to really like Dark Souls. Gonna run past that and we are gonna get the uh trial. I don't technically need it, but we'll do it anyway. Ooh. That was uh that was a bleed. That was a bleed. I heard a lot. There's a good recipe there that you want to make sure you grab. And we're going to just pick it all up. And you see everything is literally melting now. We're only on a four link. And we don't have any leveling uniques. We don't have anything crazy. We could have even been a lot stronger. We're just choosing not to be. Calling strike on the vortex? No. Um, the dot wouldn't call. It would only be each time I do the actual initial hit, so it would be annoying. And worse than the other support times I have. Why not vortex champion? Because this is for new players. I see vortex champion being decent to play though. Great, Dunkus. Hope you're doing well, dude. Thanks for asking. So, we'll end the Delirium here. Especially in long zones, what ends up happening is there's, like, such a large damage reduction. I thought you were just testing stuff. No, right now we're doing a series for new players where we're walking through a build and showing every step of the way. So, I'm doing a lot less chat interaction than normal. So now we're coming up on Chavron once again, and uh, she has resurrected Brutus. So this is actually a fairly scary boss fight. However, nothing is really scary for the build we're playing. So we are just going to be, uh, we're going to be owning it. Not very worried. Alright, let's see. Can you describe this part of the lore using football terms? I don't know any football terms. I have never ever watched a game of football. Right. We are now coming up on Chevron. Chevron 2 Electric Boogaloo. I don't know any car analogies either. That XP bar is always moving, yeah. You can see we are literally just melting the boss. 
Um, bosses are getting like a lot like less important to actually explain mechanics. Run around and run around in circle and you're pretty much golden. Hey, Zizarin, this will be my first time playing PoE. Where should I go for finding league, uh, good league starter builds? So my YouTube is the best spot for that. And uh, what I'm doing right now, this is an eight-hour series that I make for YouTube, which is called Everything Explained. So this is meant for people that have never played PoE before. And I try to walk them through and explain pretty much everything um, that happens during the game. Then now in this next zone, if you go here, there will be a recipe for spell damage, which is actually quite good for our build. I can't remember exactly where. Oh, there. Um, and we put a lot of League Starters up, including some on the last day. We will be working flat out. Uh, nothing good. We'll vendor everything. Boom. Got myself some Wisdoms. Thank you for the sub. Appreciate it. This will have a guide, yes. Yeah, it's not even just my guides. We also work with a lot of other creators as well. And then they later will end up doing updates on their YouTube. So this is quite nice. This is definitely worth upgrading to. I just need to be level 48 and I'm going to have to craft lightning resist on it. But 78 life is very, very good. We don't care about any of the other stats, but the fact that it has an open suffix means that um, I'm actually going to um, upgrade to it. I'm also thinking about doing a new type of series for this league start for my character. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but maybe with the help of a few moderators and some viewers, I might be able to do it. I want to try to time lapse every single item change on my character. I think that'd be really cool, and nobody's ever done that before. Right, this is a very dangerous boss. Again, the way to defeat him, you guessed it, you run in circles. Very easy. You could probably write a script for it. That'd be cool. Unpaid labor? No, I pay my moderators. Stage two, you guessed it, run in circles. But now you also have to avoid those meteors. All right, we'll go back to town and then go back from the waypoint. Good tidings to you. How much does a mug get paid? Depends on who they are and what they do. Like, a few moderators aren't here enough or do enough to be paid. And then Mediki and Vero are paid full time. And others get paid for, like, based on what they do, they contractually. There, we'll grab Melding. And now we're going to pick up the Life Mastery here. Boom. I also got to remember because of that that was the first time we picked up a live mastery um we get 3% more damage too Yeah, I know most people don't pay their moderators, but there's a lot of streamers that should I hate this argument that you don't need to Right, we will continue. We have the waypoint. There is a recipe in this area if you need. It's the um, it's like craft stats on items. Oh, and some of my moderators didn't want to be paid because then they'd feel like it turned into a jump. But they got offered. So that's nice. Like Vouch. Didn't want to be paid. He just said he wants me to watch his pancake pictures whenever he makes pancakes. He makes very good pancakes. I want one.
Just need a moment to catch my breath. All right, so we're just picking up some side point uh, skill point quests. These are optional, and for a long time until we power creep past it, it was very common to skip these on hardcore until you were as much as sixty-five to seventy. Why do you get three percent extra damage for the life mastery? That's a trickster ascendancy. Each each different mastery gives us three percent more damage. Oh, I agree, Chaos, for sure. So, for the mechanic for this, you need to kill those three. They're basically guardians. And then it releases Rislatha. Alright. We're out of here. Almost. Oh. I do want that. Let's see. And at some point... <coughs> oh. At some point you will start getting overwhelmed. Well, we don't need to switch to that. But it's not bad for overall resist. Uh, at some point we uh, will get a bit overwhelmed with the amount of rare items that drop. There is like a little bit like... Item drop power creep in PoE. You end up getting way more than you need. Where do we need to go now? I think we move up towards more cold damage and eventually more life. Did I grab all the passives? Yes. Cut up. Uh. It'll be really interesting to like see comments on this video. Usually we get very positive feedback. I want to hear how like people are experiencing this if it's their first build, like how easy it is to play. So obviously it's not my first time playing. <laughs> like EA had really good feedback. Very easy for new players. Mm. Actually, a pretty decent shield. And you skip the collect three components thing in Act 5? Yep, I even talked about it. This whole run is going to be a video. You're a positive person, except when you play Dota. True. When the real me comes out. Need a moment to catch my Here. This is actually a pretty good XP zone as well. This is surprisingly the second best XP zone after Chamber. So even even farming before here is not as good as Chamber. Just because Chamber, even though it's lower level and obviously you get less XP, has so many more blue monsters and stuff. So it's it's insane how good Chamber is. I grab this here. We get a little questy quest item. The Brand King. His time has almost it's also like an interesting series because it's very like early top heavy because like you know all the currencies are dropping early. A lot of the things are happening so there's less and less to explain. Our gems aren't changing as much. We can see that like my cold snap is actually hitting hard enough to get a 40% uh, buff. It is not hitting hard enough to get a 40% buff on rares. That means it's also not going to hit high enough to get a 40% buff on uniques. So that means that cruelty is not necessarily the best damage support gem for bosses. Yeah, we got new teasers on Twitter today. Will you switch hypothermia with swift assembly later? No, swift assembly does nothing for our build at all. It does nothing. Swift assembly is something used with traps or mines. Swift affliction? Oh, I can't remember.
you can do. I think it's three percent more damage or something. The problem is that if you're not reapplying your damage in time, you're losing a lot of damage. But most likely not. And actually having the dot stay in place for longer is good. Don't that make rares easier to kill? It should do. Rares should be easier to kill. And we're getting uh, stronger curses against rares. And bosses should be a lot easier. Like, this should be a really, really good league to kill um, boobers. I haven't fully decided what I'm doing for my own league start, but the options are either hardcore solo self found or duo found with steel mage. Like the most likely. Steel said he was gonna think about it. Do you have fun? Yeah, so we play, we make a private league and we play me and him. On a hardcore. Just instead of cell phone, there's two of us. So we just trade with each other, and that means, like, say, Say I'm playing Cold Dot and he's playing, you know, Cleave. And I find a really good weapon, I'll just give him that. And then if he finds some good Cold Dot stuff, he will give me that. You could just do a found on Hardcore Trade. More fun now, my own private league. see so um that once you've done this and yeah it is a little slow and annoying at least it's very easy for our build because obviously honestly the nicest thing about this is having the vortex thing also you don't need to wait here at all for anything that was just because i was explaining you and you can teleport down with flame dash this is why obviously having always attack without moving is super nice as well you can't do it without that Well, you could just do it on hardcore trade or softcore trade if you want to play group fun and just trust each other. But it's cooler to have a private league. No advantage. And there's nothing wrong with doing group fun in regular league. Do, do, do. So now these are very, very scary. Always watch out for those and try to stay away from them. They have this insane slam and crazy damage scaling. Um, that slam. That um, does a lot of damage. And we've seen a lot of people get one hit here. It's very, very scary. Almost a good belt. Not really. No good stats. Ah, let's see. Oh, I didn't even see the Vile Side area. Vile Side areas are quite good. They will have a um, chance to drop Vile Gems. And I think already now they can drop Sacrificial Fragments for Aziri. Um, I generally never visit Vile areas at all. They're kind of rippy and they're not super worth. Unless you really need a Vile skill. Now, this boss, um, again, we're cold. Though. We're realistically not ever going to struggle with the boss. We run in a circle, our vortex is auto-casting, and the boss is slow as hell. So, um, there are a few tricks here. You can obviously dodge like this manually, and that's fine. But I can show you another, uh, after we've done this one stage, I'll show you another neat trick for the next stage if you don't want to dodge. And again, you just do the normal combo that you've been used to. And you see the, like, HP is just melting. Now, you just portal out of here. You're like, I don't want to deal with this shit, man. My lightning rest is 30. Notice, even after I put down a portal, as long as I don't move or click anything except the portal, my grace period stays here. I am immortal. 
Obviously, I can just stay down because I don't have a problem with dodging. But you can do it. And that's cool. It's also going to be slightly slower. Cheating. You know, I told them about this in the very first alpha. If they haven't fixed it by now. There is a cap on action speed reduction in bosses. I just don't remember what it is anymore. Nice. We'll pick up some random things. Also, like, obviously, I, I try to prioritize the smaller items, right? Things that are, like, four slots or three slots. Uh, and now we've unlocked a major pantheon and a small pantheon. So these you can later upgrade in maps to later get, for example, freeze immunity. And it's really good to get stun immunity for early on. We are actually getting stun immunity later here when we're around maps. It's not super important right now. And then we can also get a uh, life flask uh, recovery from the small pantheon. So we're getting some cool little buffs there for free. Um, it's not the worst boot, but we're I'm pretty happy with the one we have. So we're just going to vendor everything except the helmet. Um, that is true. Uh, let's see. We're going to go to our hideout. And uh, I am going to craft lightning rest on my beautiful new helmet with 78 life. This also can last me all the way to maps. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, here is an easy fuck up that a lot of people do if they're using skitter bots. So I'm going to show you something. So let's say that we were using Skitterbots, right? I would have very, very little mana left, but boom. Oh, maybe there's something else. Anyway, uh, it's a bad example, but very often um, support gems can affect your actual aura. So if you have multiple things in the same one, and some auras will do that with Arcane Surge, especially Vile skills and stuff, um, it'll, it'll affect the main skill and... You know, make it reserve more. Yeah, like bone chill in skater boss. Like here, boom. It's like, oh no, my man is gone. So be careful with putting support gems next to uh things they're using. Yeah, we're not actually using skater bots. We don't really need it anymore. I don't really need to level it either. We will continue. All right, there is a side quest in this area that is very good to do because we are going to get the single best gem, or sorry, not gem. We're going to get the single best flask in the game. We'll go get it. Uh, I'm not using any other aura at this point. Boom, quartz flask. This is insanely strong. Uh, we can use an augment on it. There, I only need one life flask at this point, although I would probably recommend... I guess you could also run Clarity at this point and drop your Hallowed Mana Flask. You do recover infinitely. You could play around with Clarity level. Um, so you can buy a level 1 from uh, Lily or in Library, or you can buy a leveled one. Here, we, we can go look. We can go look, see if Clarity would solve the mana issues, because... Hello. New players usually prefer multiple life flasks. So let's see with the level 11 clarity if that fixes our money issues for now. Just so we know. Just so we know. Okay. That's probably fine. And you can probably level it up once, maybe twice more. It actually is this flat mana, so you're going to have to balance it a little bit. But yeah, you could probably keep two life flasks with this. Um, I am pretty comfortable rolling with one life flask, but I do recommend two quite often. It is quite nice to have two. You're not speaking to NPCs? No, there's never a need to. You never need to pick up any quests or anything. But yeah, this seems pretty okay with clarity. Um, I guess we can just do that for now. Have two life flasks still. So I still like three, you do need to. Yeah, you need to pick up the finished quests, and, but you never need to like pick up quests except those. Uh, 
quite nice. Honestly, my least favorite thing about Lost Ark was having the like constant was it L or F or D spam something like that it was definitely my least favorite part. Only alternative declared would probably be skitterbots. Yeah, the problem with skitterbots is then you actually have annoying mana issues. Just need a moment. It's gonna be annoying for new players. Hi, Ty Ty Killer. Good to see you. Are you making the famous list? I like the Ty Ty list. Ty Ty makes like a list of what's like. Decent of builds without making guides. If I'm 15, this sure. <laughs> it's just to pump his Twitter followers, though. Yeah. Taita is a very scheming person. That's very true. Very scheming person. He schemes a lot. Alright, we're gonna go do the trial up here. I guess I don't really need to show off the trials, but I'll do them anyway. Like the lever, you're just running through it. And like I said earlier, if you're running through, the traps don't really have enough surface area to kill you. Very, very nice. Yep, Flame Nash is not available in Ruthless. That is correct. Then we're gonna go do the quest. Lining arrow. What are we doing? And everything explained. It's a series for new players. All right. Just gonna run at the bottom here and pick up a quest item, a little quest. And then we are going to go and meet Maligaru again. Plot twist, he's not actually dead either. I sense a pattern here. Okay, a little quest. And we're going to go straight to the crossroads and go northwest. Right, let's see. Uh, do I go for damage? Yeah, we can go for more damage. Why not? Live a little. We're on softcore. If you are following this part on Hardcore, which you probably shouldn't be watching and everything explained and playing Hardcore, but you know, that's speed. Uh, you could go straight for the Life Mastery over here first, I would recommend. Oh my god, I hate that Ice Prison thing. Very annoying ability. Quartz Flask lets you run through that Ice Prison or you can just blink through it. Any good boots? Nope. No problem, this is. How rippy is Ice Prison on Ruthless? Um, as long as you have a Quartz Blast, Ice Prison is never a problem because you just run straight through it. It's as if it doesn't exist. The problem is when you don't have Quartz Blast. Then you die. Wait, is this just a complete dead end? Remember what I said earlier about Val's side areas being awful and we hate them and they're the worst? They actually added a little gap in the bone prison. I wonder if they did that because Asmongold died to it and he was like, why can't we run out of this? Which is a good point. It's good that we can run out of it now. Well, Cider is trying to like remake the zone in a weird way so it becomes not like the normal layouts. Hello, right, then we need to put the quest item in here. We activate, grab the waypoint, and there's a recipe here somewhere. I think it's at the back of the map device. Now, if you do lose all six portals in here, you do need to go get a new map device, I believe. I don't actually know because I've never had that happen, but you do have a limited amount of portals. How can I explain that? Not important. Gonna power through. Pretend you didn't see it. I guess it should be called an almost everything I explained. I'm also not gonna explain betrayal. 
here's my two hour essay on betrayal. There will be a stalling podcast before they start. There will be. Alright. So he summons the like, mini bosses that you have to fight. And then the only thing that you should really be worried about is that like um the the star attack, like the five purples. But obviously it's pretty slow and telegraphed attack. So if I stand like this. Okay, I mean he's so bad he can't even hit me, so I don't even know what to tell you. Oh, I should have waited. Okay, I killed him too fast. But if you don't kill him that fast, he will go invulnerable and do like a weird like flicker strike attack where you can't target him. Talk to Sin, grab the key, and the same thing as an act two. It points to you where you want to go. It's always wherever the waypoint's facing. This dissolves when you get here. Dizzy, thanks for five months. Uh, not a bad glove, but too little life. Thank you for all the subs and support during this. I'm just, just ignoring alerts and stuff so we get a good teaching moment. Now there is a trial here. I'm actually going to skip it just to save some time. Um, I feel like most people watching find the trials pretty, they're pretty samey. They don't really change a lot. The trials themselves don't really change a lot. So obviously I'm trying to avoid casting calls them when I can. Like if I see that my vortex is going to kill things, I'd rather have that. And then boom. We are here. Halfway through Act 7, we got some skill points to grab and some bosses to kill. And then the reason why we normally end them in Act 9 is because... Um, well, normally I do them on hardcore and very, very common to prepare and gear in Blood Aqueduct for quite a few hours. And when you do that, the Act 10 is so incredibly easy that it's not generally, especially something you'll need a, a guide with on software. So I'll show my like normal farming run. And obviously you have an idea on what to look out for on gear at the moment. And that's also covered even more depth in uh, build guides. So, like, it's mostly, like, life and resist that we're looking for in here. And you've seen how little we've had to craft now. You do find most of the things that you need. Um, and, and obviously, you will get usually one lucky thing every other league start. Like, obviously, now we have the curse ring that we're not using. Leveled up clarity again. Gotta be a little careful about overleveling it because that isn't... Clarity isn't a percentage-based or it's a flat... So every every level clarity gets, it'll cost more mana. This build is ramping, yeah. And occultists would have had the explosions by now, which are they're super fun. Wait, are you doing another POA explanation video for the new league? So ideally, this is a show that I want to do every single league that I can. Um, like some leagues, there will be too many changes, so I can't do it until the league has started. But now I can do it before the league has started, which is nice. Because there's no changes. Oh god. You gotta be careful for the black rain here and that spare attack. He doesn't have anything else that's scary. But yeah, I mean, I've just had so much positive feedback on these. They usually get like 200,000 views every time I put one up. And people will watch them for an absurd amount of time. There's like three hours or two hours average watch time. So... People like them, I make videos. Okay, we... Okay, well, you can take Chris's necklace. I usually ignore it. Uh, if I can show you what it does. I will show you. Um, right. Let's see. We are going to go for the middle wheel first. Uh, really, really nice. Uh, increased effect of cold ailments. So the more increased effect of cold ailments we get... Hey, there's the div card I told you guys about earlier. Ten alterations. Um, the more chill effect you have, the slower everything will be. Like, 
some endgame bosses will be literally ridiculously slow. Very, very slow. Oh, nice Belkin. Right, um, we're gonna go in here. It is on its way most of the time. I usually pick it up and throw it out because I don't find it. Alright, let's see. We'll pick that up. Yeah, Thor. Tell you later. Never, we're not making this video. Okay, so now I usually will go into every Delirium Mirror when leveling, and I'll get to usually three rewards and then cut it short because it does make everything tankier and a lot more damaging monsters and stuff. And it can be a little bit annoying to try to go for four every zone. So now I would just end it. Then a bunch of rewards here. Almost a full binding. We do get a scepter. We'll check if it has anything cool for cold. It does not. I can't be bothered with the cluster jewel. And we're going to kill Gruth Cool. Little bit of a scary boss. A lot of people used to wait until there were 70 for this boss. But it does have a secret weakness. You guessed it, running around in circles. Very, very strong in Path of Exile. Um, if I do find a good item, I'll like hover over it and show why it's good as well. And obviously when you're new, it will take you longer to look at items and figure out why they're not as good. And again, on Softcore, you can just absolutely Corpse Rush. Absolutely, you can just Corpse Rush bosses. And it's so nice whenever you're in a zone with kind of fast monsters that follow you because they will literally run in and kill themselves on your vortex um, because they're trying to follow you. A little low on portal scrolls. Right, we'll grab a skill point here. Now, are you running out of portal scrolls? Well, you can buy from whatever the caster seller is portal scrolls for three wisdoms. And then obviously you can sell transmutes, armor scraps, or whetstones. For wisdoms. Remember to live. I'm alive. Wailem, you have one? No. Do Kishar a star for a skill point there? Alright, we'll go back to the waypoint. So when we're this far in and we don't want to do that much backtracking, now I'm holding control down, like I said earlier, to make a new zone because I might as well run through these. It'll actually be faster too because obviously killing monsters give me fast charges. And there you can see Gruth's Altar. So I'll show how you do that. You actually don't need to kill. It spawns a, a bunch of blues and rares, but they're kind of slow at spawning. Oh, something dropped something. I had to go back for that. But yeah, you can just run past that. You He just wants you to put it there. Gruth. But he gets for spitting on us. The Orb of Binding will um, make a... Socket up to four sockets for length. It's very, very nice early for socket pressure. Um, <clears throat> they're like one of the best gems that you could find while leveling. And that is why they've made sure that you obviously do not drop any of these while leveling. They're actually incredibly rare during the campaign. You'll have a bunch of them at the late game where they are a lot less important. It'd be really nice if... Honestly, they should straight up have a quest reward that gave a binding orb pretty crazy to me that they uh they don't you have some videos that go into that league mechanic we just walked past called incursion um that's super important to cover in this we're not going to do it yeah sometimes league mechanics will get them we will grab that essence wrath is quite nice and we're just going to keep running you do not need cast speed for this build, though. No. If you see somebody ask a question in chat that I've already answered, feel free to answer it so I don't have to repeat it, because most people will be watching this on YouTube, which hopefully they paid attention. Hopefully. Surely. Alright. Then we're coming to the end of the zone, and that like little star there gives you a skill point. Now we're coming to what, for most people, ends up being the worst zone in the entire game. Now, the reason for that is um, it seems very hard to find where you're supposed to go. It does actually only have like three layouts in it. So it's very, very easy to get to the middle. 
can I only be in a few places? So there is one really annoying layout where it is far left, which I think we have now. We do! I think there's an even further left one. And then there's one where it's like sort of straight across. A lot of people don't like this zone. I'm gonna go hand in our skill point. Mm. Any reason why you're not using shield charge already? Because this is for new players. Oh, mastery. So, I mean, I might as well grab the extra cold exposure. That'll buff us frost our frost bomb a little bit. Uh, let's see. Do I have enough to get rid of that? No. But we would really like to get the effect increased effect of non-damaging elements. So we could have like regretted that now. Right, let's continue. Coming up on the Act Just 7 boss. Have to talk to her first, and you give her the fireflies that we picked up. And, um... That's all we need there. Now we're coming up to the Act 7 end boss, and we're soon in Act 8. And Act 8, Act 9 is usually where we end up stopping. Because, like I said, that is, we'll, we'll like finish Act 8, and at the start of Act 9 we end up stopping. Because the, the best tactic there is to like giga giga over level. You get so much gear, you end up going like really really well into maps and uh, you have a lot of XP. A lot of people also farm out a Tabula Rasa, which is a unique item which has six sockets and six links and they are white so you can put any gem, any support gem you want in there. Um, that is a lot bigger of a grind, it got nerfed a little bit so it used to be only like anywhere from two to four hours. Now it can be as much as five hours pretty easily, depending on how much you, uh, how fast you are. If you do have any quantity gear, that does a make a big, big difference. Um, like Sedima's Touch or Piranda's Place, it makes a very big difference for farming humilities. Are there white gems that fit into any socket color? There is a gem called Portal and Remote Mine Detonation. Oh, no. I'm too lazy to go back for three jeweler's orbs. But um, normally, if I was actually playing, I probably would. I probably would. Three jewelers is nice. It changes the sockets of items. And fusing is linked them. And then obviously it's based on the quality of the item. So the higher quality on an item, the more likely it is to link. So if you are able to get eventually like 30 quality, then that will link more likely than something with only zero. And it is impossible to roll over a 6 link in a 6 socket. And it is impossible to roll over a 5 link if it's only a 5 socket. You can roll over a... Um, you can roll over a 5 socket. Sorry, a 5 link in a 6 socket. And you can roll over a 4 link in a 4 socket. It's really funny because I was watching a friend of mine play once in like 2017. And he was spamming fusings on a 4 socket. And he was like, dude, this one four link. And I was like, you know that it doesn't stop on a four link, right? Because there are reasons to break a four link. There's no reasons to break a five or a six link usually. I had no idea that quality increases the chance of linking. It actually says on the jeweler and the fusing. Most people just don't read it. And for a long time, a lot of people thought I was joking. So they would go like, Pepe laugh, and then I'm like, no, I'm serious, read the text, and then they're like, Keck, wait, what do you mean? Just need a moment to catch my breath. Oh, well, Joel, if this was next patch, I'd be excited. Um, it's a pretty nice shield, we're not gonna keep it, we are just gonna vendor this stuff. And now we're coming up against a boss. Now, this boss can bug very, very easily favorable for us, the player, um, where he basically only has two stages and doesn't go down a lot. It doesn't actually matter with your damage. It'll happen even if you're very, very slow. Um, hey, he's bugged. So now he went straight to this stage, even though we killed him fairly slowly. Sometimes he'll go down like way, way, way more. I'm not actually sure what prompts the bug. It's pretty random. But now that he's bugged, it means that he's most likely only going to go down that like one time. But sometimes it'll go down as much as like five or six times. Very, very annoying. 
we'll pick up um I'll, I'll describe a little bit why i'm picking up things and stuff because now we're starting to get a lot of items and you'll notice that i'm not picking up everything right so let's go through it and explain why holy chainmail it doesn't have good sockets i don't really care about it uh the right sword i'm not a melee quarter staff i'm not gonna use the staff um thicket bow i'm not gonna use a bow cutting knife it's not a rune dagger, so I don't think this can have spell stuff on it at all. No, that's the attack one. Um, and then we're going to pick up the Conjurer's Gloves, the Agate, I'm in it, and the Omen one, because these are all things that could be applicable to our build. Um, so, we look at those, and none of them were any good. That means we're going to sell them for alteration shards. Now, it wouldn't be bad to pick up more things just to sell for shards. That's always a good thing, but eventually you're going to get to the point where especially in maps where you could fill up your inventory six times and like you know like oh my inventory is full better go bang and the reason that is bad is because you start to get to the point where your items you're not going to get a realistic upgrade right let's say that we already had an item that had 78 life 30 30 lightning resist 26 cold uh sorry yeah like 30 lightning 26 cold and open suffix that i can craft fire right Triple rest with life. That's a very, very good item already. Now I'm obviously going to care a lot less about picking up helmets. Because the fact that I'm going to, in the early game, find a better helmet that's going to replace that is quite low. So then I care a lot less about picking that up. Uh, I never use a special item filter for SSF, to be honest. But yeah, so that's that's quite important. And like, it's Ooh. killing monsters in Path of Exile is not a finite resource, right? Like you can infinitely kill monsters. You're never going to run out of maps. You're never going to run out of things to kill. So because of that, Watch that yourself. means that time is what you're going to ru run out of. Just need a moment to catch my breath. Um, somebody asked in chat, will you be making Atlas trees for software players? Um, no, not really. I make a lot more... My trees are definitely more SSF oriented. I just don't play software enough with the... Like for people that want to like min-max. Like my, my Atlas trees are best to follow if you like keeping to yourself and you like being kind of self-sufficient. I will never be the person to go to for like softcore giga juicing the economy content. That will probably never be me because I don't play softcore and I'm never thinking about like, ooh, what is the most profit? I'm thinking what is the best for me and, and what I need. So uh, Grimro is really, really good for things like that. Like mine are a lot more about being self-sufficient. Like my playstyle and what I enjoy in games, I really like trading and stuff. But the problem is that in games very quickly, and this is why I love being traded very early in games. Like I don't like being Iron Man or Solo Cell Phone early because early on, People play very different, but very, very quickly a game becomes solved and people start playing for not not what not what they think is fun or not what they think is like useful for their character, but ooh, what will make me the most amount of currency and then I will buy what I need. And I don't necessarily love that. I love either like finding my own things that I need or just doing things that I think is fun. Right, Dodri is very, very scary. Let's see, let me assign a cold point there. A little bit more damage for the fight. So, she will, like, now leap on me. And we can just blink out of the way. Because she will target where you were. Um, after that, a really good trick. We don't need that on this build. But, spamming the valve will give you a few seconds. Where you have none of, like, that, that, that weird curse debuff on you. Uh, and you can get a few seconds of damage. So, as soon as the valve appears, a lot of people don't even see that it's there. Uh, but you can click that and give you a few seconds of uncursed damage. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Damn, it's just that too many clickbait softcore Atlas 3 happened last day and it wasn't fun. Thank you for input. I mean, Grimro has really, really good softcore content. And like, usually explains what it's for and, and what to do with it. Let's see, I have to take a break soon. Oh, yes, there is a crafting recipe to the left of the last waypoint that you absolutely do want. I usually, I come honestly, I completely forget. I usually make a new account or a new private league for this. Um... So that literally everything is completely fresh and I actually forgot for this one. I'll do that for... I'll, I'll do that in three months. Nice perplex. Who? Grimro. Can somebody link Grimro's YouTube in my channel? It's He's got a lot of good content. But yeah, I will have Atlas three ups and stuff, but they will be for people like... It's fine to use on software trade, but not if you just want to giga max like the amount of money you're making. Then, then my content isn't always the best. Right, so here you see that we're at a crossroads. We are actually going to put a portal here. And there's quite a few of these crossroads in this area. Um, to the right is going to be um, Tolman. And to the left is going to be progress to the next zone. I am a, I, I hate backtracking. I hate backtracking without killing monsters. So I'm putting that portal there. And then I'm going to the next waypoint, portaling back. And then I get no backtracking. I don't have to go through like endless zones that I've already killed. Yo guys, Grim here. Grim is off for two months so far. Oh, I didn't know that. Most of the soft producers don't make a lot of like beginner friendly content. They just juice. You still use Orb Binding on Body Armor in Act 7 or 8. Uh, yeah. I mean, you don't really need a 5 link until like five, tier 5 or 10 maps. This build can probably do tier 16 maps on a 4 link. It is just incredibly strong. Um, so, this build on an Occultist, uh, which was kind of a dumb idea to be in with this Occultist to begin with. Should have been uh, Trickster there as well. But um, this same build in Ruthless, which is a harder game mode of PoE with no movement skills and stuff, I played this build. And on a 4 link with a very trash gear, I killed the uh, Endless Hunger on Hardcore. Or Unending Hunger, whatever this stupid Shrek monster is called. We're gonna get a skill point here. I wonder if anyone else has killed it since. It was an awful fight. I wonder if anything other than Cold Dot can do it. There. Don't need any of those items. We're going to go back to town. I'm going to pick up the skill point from Clarissa. Do you know, I have neglected to mention something, and I'm so sorry, but if you hold control when you're assigning a skill point, it will apply it instantly without you clicking apply points. I'm so sorry. Right. I will be right back.
All right, I'm back. Had to scratch my cat's belly a bit. He's being too cute. Kept jumping into my hand. All right. Also, you see how little like socket or socket pressure we have on like bank space so far. Like obviously we're vendoring most things. Uh, we don't need to keep much and um, mostly currency. And if you do feel like Path of Exile is the game for you, buying a currency tab is very, very big. Um, the best value. And I would wait for a sale. It's like every three weeks. And um, and even like one premium tab plus the currency tab will like take you a very long way. And then, yeah. Like, so far I have 25,000 hours in Path of Exile or around there. And, uh, yeah. It's pretty worth it. No, I'm not like starting with this. I'll be either going hardcore soul self on, or if Steel wants to, I'll be going duo found with Steel. So, like, we would play together and share all our loot. Like, that sounds really nice because, like, if if Steel agrees to duo farm, then I could just, like, not play for a few days and, and come back and he can just gear up my character for me. It's, like, so easy. He just needs to say yes. No, I'm just kidding, but it'll be, a, it'll be a fun experience, I think. Who is Steel? Steel is one of the best Path of Exile players. Also one of my best friends. Deal. Less rent for each good item he crafts for you? Exactly. <sighs> He's also my tenant. Make him fire seeds. Still still living with you? No. I am... Um... He, uh, he lives in a house I bought as a future investment and something my, my son can have eventually, so he's just renting it off me. It was like five minutes that way. Mm -hmm. It was like five minutes that way. Oh, hello, Shane. Stalling podcast will be on the 8th, I think. One day before they start. Right. Picking up the waypoint here, and then we're going to go kill um, Solaris and Lunaris. Got to kill two mini bosses first. How much are the houses where you live? Uh, the cheapest I've seen a house for is like 50,000 pounds. Well, actually, okay, the cheapest I've seen a house for was £30,000, but that was like four years ago. They're probably slightly more expensive now. Um, if you kick it too hard, it probably falls down at that price. Most of my friends were buying houses for between £90,000 and £110,000. Um, definitely part of the reason I like Belfast a lot. Uh, obviously, rent's pretty cheap and affordable here, too. I, I'm in London and prices here are fucked. Yeah, I mean, it's not really comparable to London. Like, it's a tiny town. Median price for I live is 2 million plus. Ugh! Fuck that. My house is 400k. Yeah, I mean, my house was 400k, but I have, like, an insane house. And, yeah, I live in Belfast. He's very, very nice. And then the other house I bought was 180k. I mean, I would never want to live in an expensive city like London and stuff. I, I, I like affordable housing. Uber content viable. Ooh, oh no, I'm dead. Oh, I'm alive. That was scary. 
Right, so again, like I said earlier, be careful when clicking rare strong boxes. They're quite rippy. How did you end up in Belfast originally? Uh, playing World of Warcraft. My best friend lives next to me. Like, we, um, like, he was buying a house and he was like, the house next door is for sale. And I was like, um, so I live next to my best friend and I met him playing World of Warcraft. Oh god. So now we're starting, now that we've leveled up our gems, which I haven't really mentioned yet, but gems cost more mana when you level them up. You obviously still want to level them. Um, let's see, we don't need that. Well, actually, no, we do need that. Um, not good enough. We're not gonna, we're gonna, not gonna keep that right now. We'll keep that blue though and actually roll. Um, what did I say? Future property magnets is right No. Yes. See you. Oh, let's see. It's a there. Tell me something. Any charge you have any random ring there. Stay out of the shadows. I tried to play this spell for two hours now and struggle already. Don't know what I'm doing. Ah, uh, we can help you. It's a very fixable problem. If you wait till I am in Act 9 and I stop this playthrough, I will help you or somebody else can help you until then. Right, so this doesn't need a binding or a bonnet, but uh, we'll now look for like resist essences. So I'll use a wrath on this and that gave me... Okay, so this is hybrid life on it. So if this didn't have that four flat energy shield, I could actually craft more life on this. But at the very least, I can chrome this for one green. Um, and this is a decent upgrade. All I need to do is craft cold resist on this. Oh, nice Olaf. Yeah, Olaf will help you. That's sick. We'll craft cold resist on this and boom, we get a tiny bit of an upgrade. Obviously, I basically had a white chest until now. And uh, we'll do like a quick like survey of my gear so you can see what I'm using. We have this with 17 cold dot over time multiplier. Now I haven't mentioned this because it's absolutely not needed. But if you want to, for whatever reason, I could now craft... What level am I? I am that high and I have that many chaos. Um, oh, actually, I don't know if I am supposed to have that craft yet. But I'm at least supposed to have this one. So for 8 alterations, I could craft 44 spell damage on this. Um, if you're feeling like you're low on damage, absolutely do that. And on this one, there's not really anything I can craft. But, um, you know, like we actually, like, could have a... We could be a lot stronger than what we currently are. I just... I really like Catch my breath. downplaying things. Because if... I feel like the best thing you can do for guides and stuff is to... Have something be kind of bad. And if it works really well when it's bad, ah... They're going to have such a good experience. So, uh, we're now going to go for Soul Thief. This is really, really nice once you start getting anywhere over 500 energy shield. Um, because we are getting 10% ES and even more energy shield on kill. And now we're getting so much energy shield on kill, we're soon going to be getting like 7 or 8 or 9 energy shield on kill. So, your, uh, your energy shield will like, it'll be stacked. It'll be stacked. So now we're going to go towards the other one. Okay. And you see like everything is sort of just melting. This is why this is a good league starter. Everything is just melting. Melt. Let's see. There. I'm gonna run in here, and then in this next zone is Solaris and Onaris, but we don't have the uh, the Sun Orb. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube and stuff and want to leave feedback, um, if there are more things I should skip, less things, like, you know, I did skip two trials. 
Because uh, I'm trying to save some time. I feel like the trials are kind of all the same. It's not like I need to like, show you a puzzle or anything. So hopefully that's like fine to skip. Save some time. Next time though, I'll start even earlier. I think these are best started at like... 11 a.m. or something. Yeah, I skip outsiders because I don't like doing them. They're not really great. They're not really great. And I don't want to go too in deep into each league mechanic either because that literally adds four hours to the playthrough. But I do have like individual league mechanic walkthroughs. They're pretty long. Probably blue teeth. Yeah, Valsiders can start dropping corrupted six things from 50 onwards. That is true. Follow her. Alright. We just gotta run a little bit more and we're soon there. And then, so basically, after we have done Solaris and Nonaris, then we've unlocked two farming areas. Well, actually, we've already unlocked one farming area. If you aren't going for a Tabitha Rasa, um, it's actually quite nice for a lot of builds to farm Harbor Bridge. It's really, really good XP, and you obviously don't have to um, you don't have to kill Solaris and Nonaris, so you can be even stronger for that fight. So sometimes people will farm that, especially if you're able to farm the other sides of the Harbor Bridge that we run through. Can be very strong. Maybe even more XP than Blood Aqueduct. Um, Blood Aqueduct is really, really nice for Vortex because we're just running through it. So we're killing absolutely everything there. Um, and then, yeah, staying there until... Depending on, on how long, a lot of software players will only stay until like level 65 or 63 and then go straight to maps. But if you're a little unsure about gearing and the power of your character, staying there to as much as 70 is actually really, really good XP. You'll get a bunch of gear, a bunch of currency, and it'll really, really set you up for maps. And what's so nice about staying in Blood Aqueduct to that level is that you are so overprepared for Act 9 and 10 that the bosses will literally not even have time to phase, uh, at least on this build, because their damage is so high. So... That's like really, really nice because the Act 9 boss is actually the hardest boss in the campaign. Um, it basically has like curses that are really bad and stacks and you can't stand in puddles. It has a slam and it has adds. So that can actually be a pretty bad, scary boss fight. So over preparing and over leveling for that. Now, obviously, if you die in software to it, you just corpse rush it. <clears throat> but uh, on hardcore, it can be a big challenge. Oh, actually, I had three bindings during the campaign. How is cold out for bosses? One of the best. Oh, nice way to build. Yeah, we should do that. Grab an anger. All of those essences are resists on like belts and stuff. Ooh, it's a lot of damage. And you notice my ES is starting to be a pretty good part of my defense now. Like it's pretty much always high, and it regens so quickly. So, it's a little bit scary that my life is so bouncy, but I'm also getting, um, we're getting a, uh, third bar above our character for ES next week. It's actually something I've, like, made, like, three or four mock-ups of on Twitter and literally begged them for, for, like, four or five years now. So I'm very excited that that's finally added to the game because I think it's really annoying to have our energy shield bar, um, hold our life bar hostage for visibility. I'm, I'm very excited. There, we're just gonna push through here, and this boss can actually be a little bit scary. The other one isn't, but this you actually really want to keep up your circles. Oh, Silver Flask. Silver Flask is really, really good for our build. This is definitely something I want to use at this point. Um, ah, less duration. That's annoying. We don't want that. We'll take this, and then vendor, so we have some space. Obviously, banking more often is fine as well. I just, I already know that I'm barely picking things up anyway. So since I'm picking up so little, I'm quite happy with very rarely banking and saving a little bit of time there. 
How are you getting so much ES? So we have a decent amount of energy shield on the skill tree. And um, we have energy shield on our gear. There. Now we get another thing here. One uh, innovation on boot. We have no innovation on boot. Hmm. I mean, does not bypass energy shield and getting 3% more damage is pretty useful. Don't know if I'll keep that, but yeah, we have 200 ES here. This would be even more if I had quality on it. 80 there, 13, 20. Like most of my gear is evasion or ES evasion. So if you're struggling to find chance herbs to buy skill gems, uh, if you have any jewelers or fusings, you can turn jewelers into fusings or fusings into chance orbs. Um, oh, we'll reset the zone so we get some extra XP on the way to the boss. Pick up another level. Like that's normally what I end up doing. So you're more likely to find a bunch of jewelers or some fusings and then turn that into chance orbs. I should have mentioned that while I'm there though. That's It's great that you asked. Try to remember that next time. There, level 58. Um, go for the reservation or curse stuff. So, new boss, and this is a very hard one. You guessed it, more in circles. So this is actually a little bit harder. Um, Solaris and Lunaris both have moves where if you get caught in them, um, it's pretty scary. So, generally standing behind Solaris is always a good shout, but if you stand in the middle of that, you will die from Lunaris. I'm also starting to struggle a little bit on mana for bosses, so going back to a mana flask at this point is not a bad idea. You could also pick up two mana nodes. Right, we'll wait for her to do her ability. This one. So this will put like spears all over the ground, you need to stand behind her or that will basically kill you. I'm going to pick up the wand, and we're going to pick up the carnal boots. Probably not going to bother with the chest, because we'd have to use jewelers and fusings on it, and we're going to save those for later. I'm going to pick up the scepter, and helmets are like, probably worth picking up. Um, right. Now we are in Blood Aqueduct, and like I said, I usually very often end playthroughs here to make sure that they don't get too long. Um, ooh! So, these are really, really, really... Um, Nothing else is good, but the boots are actually really good. So the reason that these are good is because we can actually craft pretty powerful movement speed on boots. Uh, at the moment, we don't have access to this last one, but we have access to the 15 to 19% movement speed for 2C. So now, boom, I have 107 life gloves with 20 res and 15 MS, which is so nice, obviously. So I would definitely would have replaced my boot with that. Um, that is a large, large amount of life. It also has more ES and more evasion, so they're actually very, very nice. Um, and then, yeah, all the other base types that dropped were not things that were likely to be upgrades. I, I'm obviously looking for things with sockets, and I'm looking for... I'll pick up pretty much every boot, I'll pick up every wand and every scepter. And then, that uh, is pretty much the TLDR there. Uh, we will have a full build guide up for this before league start for the trickster, and it is quite potentially my league starter. I haven't fully decided yet, um, but um, quite likely it's one out of three for my potential starters for the league. Um, either way, if you're playing PoE for the first time, it should be a very, very solid character and take you very far. So we're going to end there. The uh, the next stuff, it's pretty much, you know, follow the quest helper and you should just over level here and blood aqueduct. Remember to hold control when entering the zone to make a new zone. And uh, yeah, we can do one run. Oh, acceleration shrine. And sometimes you get delirium as well. You don't want to keep delirium for too far in the zone because they'll be so tanky. Oh my god, it feels nice to have an acceleration shrine. We actually outran the delirium, so we're just gonna end it here. But you can see, like, we're we're zooming. Oh, one of our auras turned off. But we are zooming. Absolutely zooming. Cannot complain. And then normally you would just run through like this. And the reason we go into the side areas is that they have a guaranteed blue pack. And then keep a lookout for items. 
Like now you want to start thinking a little bit about gearing. So like that helmet that dropped back there, that was a four link. Um, with uh, three green, one blue, it's pretty easy to recolor uh, to four blue, or at least not like a crazy amount because it only has like 61 um, deck, 61 in, something like that. So keep a lookout for items that have uh, good sockets on them, and then maybe use an alchemy or maybe use an essence on them because here is where you want to start gearing up your character. And you know, you decide for you when you want to leave this place, but you want to stay till at least 63 ish. Most people, even on software, I think, stay to like 65 because it's so efficient XP. And there's nothing wrong with staying here till 70 and just crushing the next content. So, you know, pretty good. And uh, we'll end it here. Everything going forward, if you're over level, should be super easy. And uh, let me know what you think of this series in the comments. Give us feedback. And uh, good luck for League Start. We'll have loads of League Starters out. And thank you so much for watching. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.